attention. The movie guys love movies. Any comments made about how our job of coming up with jokes and goofing on movies might be as hard as fighting in Afghanistan are purely for entertainment purposes only. Isn't that right, Mark Wahlberg? How fucking dare you? <laughs> <laughs> got cooler he just got cooler i already like marky mark <laughs> yeah he's yeah. trying every day to make sure you don't call him that okay. say that is... cool stuff being a cool movie <laughs> sorry that is quite the <laughs> rebound that he has been able to pull off i almost forget marky mark and the funky bunch i can't because of his underwear his ads underwear. you can't forget that when you're well, a woman and, you know but in brad pitt did it too that just that one day where you're like oh you know what he's not just a heartthrob he's fucking cool <laughs> 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 you know? but what was yeah. it for Wahlberg? because for me and most gentlemen of my ilk i yes. think it's fight club well, that's for Brad Pitt. For Brad Pitt, Pitt is, the, yeah. is what turned the corner for Seven him. Seven a little bit, but you're like, I don't know. Yeah. But then Fight Club, you're like, all right. You're, well, the you're. thing is, he came. Wahlberg came onto the scene in The Basketball Diaries, which is a decent film that he's that's really right. good he in. Was. So like his he debut wasn't. was really uh, good. Yeah. Then he you know, proceeded to be meat for a while. You know? yeah. <laughs> meat. <laughs> delicious, yeah. What is delicious the one meat. That, uh, that he really... That turned the corner all for All of a sudden, you're like, all right, I can like this guy. Yeah, it Boogie Nights probably. Oh, Boogie Nights! I loved him in that because yeah. it combined the coolness with yeah, the mo- underwear. Yeah, that movie so. was so cool that <laughs> it was undeniable. Like everything involved yeah. in this movie is cool. It's just great. Yeah. And then the other guys is what did it for me as far as oh. him being oh. funny. Yeah. Oh, that, that movie's just too. Now I I excuse um, what was the M Night Shyamalan that he was in? That was the <laughs> most atrocious. The happening. The Horror. happening. Horror. Uh, oh my god! That that's a movie. That movie happens that should when should not have been happening. No, it should. <laughs> that's what <laughs> happens true. when you when you shoot the outline. Oh. <laughs> You're like, should we write the whole script? Nah, just shoot the outline. You get close enough. We'll fill it in as we go. You know, I've heard Rutting. this opinion. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this opinion for a while. It was finally on a Halloween. That is that is an astound- astoundingly undirected movie in terms of performance. I mean, amazing. I mean, everybody in that. I mean, it's Mark Wahlberg and, and the the girl in it is the uh, the new girl, right? Zoe Deschanel. Zoe Deschanel. Oh, of course, we love Zoe Deschanel. Right, of course, we love Mark not? Wahlberg. And you just watch them both, and you're like, they're how are they? How are these two people not acting at it's all? It's crazy at all. <laughs> yeah, it's that's the damnedest thing. You know, everybody's the movies like reacting like, what the hell's going on? Like, I kind of have the same feeling when you're like, wait a second. Ew. There's something weird going on here. These two great actors aren't acting at all. Wait, here comes another actor. He's Leguizamo's not acting at all either. Something weird. It must be in the trees. <laughs> hey, well, welcome to the Movie Showcast, everybody. Part of the vast and sprawling Movie Guys empire. And the last time I was inside a woman is when I visited the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> You've reached ground zero for all things movies and comedy We bring the two together right here on our show every week With rants, sketches, previews, characters, jokes, bits Special guests and more You can expect that in the next hour or so As we broadcast from the Admiral's Club Where a quiet, relaxing oasis awaits you <laughs> Catch us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube Search the Movie Showcast or the Movie Guys And we come right up And don't forget, we're also available on badtomato.fm radio At wbad.net Fridays at 4pm Eastern, 1 Pacific and as always, please subscribe where possible. Tell your friends, share, and like posts at the Movie Guys on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, wherever you find us. My name is Paul Preston. I am your host, here as ever, with Lee Kias, Adam Witt, and Karen Volpe. Later in the show, we will be joined by comic actor and one of the forces behind the Super Ego podcast, Matt Gourley. Ooh, I hope I don't miss that. As yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he likes James Bond. <laughs> As Matt Vember continues. <laughs> and uh, as ever, we are the place to go to for the deep dive looks at what's new in theaters. Coming up this week is the latest film from Alexander Payne, Nebraska, sure to be in talks around Oscar time. Nice. But first up, prepare for fingers to start oh-snapping. I can't tell you how good it is to have all of us under the same roof again. Christmas in New York. That's going to be great. Reuniting there is the cast of The Best Man for The Best Man Holiday. I can hear the eyes rolling already. <laughs> <laughs> eyes and, roll. the, and the neck going. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, There is quite a bit of sass in that trailer. I remember Rated when this film sassy. came out. Never saw it. <laughs> the first one? Yeah. 14 years ago, I was what, six? <laughs> and, okay. No, I don't remember. There was a big <laughs> slew of those, uh, you know, like... Like like real regular stories of like middle class you know African Americans at that time, but I don't remember this one. There was like Waiting to Exhale and Love Jones. Yeah, Love Jones. <laughs> Love Jones. Which the, was the poster, the poster, the poster in the Admirals here. Club. But I don't remember this one. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think we were in uh, 
working on a cruise ship, so we were in the Bahamas think, when that one was playing. Yeah, I don't think we went out of our way to find a way to find it. Yeah, I was but all, I will tell you Terrence that Howard we no, went, Fight Club, like went out of about. our way to figure out how to do the bus schedule to go see that horrible uh, John Travolta yeah. movie. Battlefield Earth. Uh, oh, my bad. I think we should have maybe you gone out of our way to see this. We'd have been better you, off. You know I'm a summer completist. Good Lord. I, yeah. It was my fault. You stopped off in a tropical island and pr- proceeded to go into the yes. dark to watch that? Yes, and we took a you bus. You are a movie guy, Paul. It is a great... We have title. <laughs> it's a great tropical isle. I am not kidding. It's a great tropical isle it... that we go to twice a week. <laughs> I don't want to say it's... <laughs> it, was a, it was a normal Sunday. I'm going to find the movie yeah. theater. You keep taking me back to a place over and over again. <laughs> and, so. and it's not easy to get to. You get on this little crappy bus and... Oh my God! One time we were on our way to the movie theater. We got on the little crappy bus. Adam, you're gonna love this. Mm-hmm. And this little shitty bus, and it's just tiny. It's not one of these big buses like we have here. It's probably seats twelve people. So when you get on, you have to crawl over people that you don't know. You're very tight in there. Karen, were, were you getting and on the short bus? I was. Okay. I was on the short bus in the Bahamas. <laughs> it may not and, have been public transportation. <laughs> <laughs> you know me so well. You have to flip down this little pilot seat kind of thing. So you're sitting right on top of each other. Well, the kind bus driver knew that this would not always be very convenient for everyone to be that close to each other since some people were not bathing properly. So he took it upon himself to make it smell better. (laughs) And he did this move, which was fierce. Uh He bought himself one of those little triangle air filters, the, 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 the ones with the pine cones, you know, the little pine trees? Okay, they hang from the river. So he went and he bought himself about... I'd say 50 of those, <laughs> and he hung it completely along the ceiling, <laughs> like in that horror movie. Like in Seven? Like in seven. Yes! Where the guy's been there for yes! like a year, and he's still like a total skeleton, and the whole yes! ceiling is covered. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. We get in that bus, nobody else bus gets the reference. Yeah. Paul and I get in the bus, and Paul's head's hitting these things, that's he's so tall. Hilarious. And we're like, oh my god, it's like in the movie Seven. <laughs> yeah. check, check under your seats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, our first film of the, uh, film of the week is uh, not, I repeat, not, Based on a book. So, Lee, does that even qualify as a movie? No, it does not, Paul. All right, it's The Best Man Holiday. (laughs) Our surf music has been uh, co opted and rapified. I like it a lot. It's been co opted by by hip people. I think that's awesome. Well, the whole gang is back. Oh, and uh, they were also together a first time. Oh. <laughs> As the Best Man Holiday reunites the original cast of 1999's kinda hit, The Best Man, <laughs> for a sequel that takes the characters to the next level, decorating a Christmas tree together. <laughs> the original The Best Man was part of a wave of films in the late 90s following in the wake of Soul Food that presented African Americans who weren't popping caps or starting a revolution or being a black Dracula, but rather... <laughs> They were upwardly mobile and miserable like the rest of us. The cast of future NAACP Image Award nominees is directed by Malcolm D. Lee, writer-director of the original The Best Man, and most recently director of Scary Movie 5, for which he was awarded a talking to from Bill Cosby (laughs) backstage at the Image Awards. (laughs) The all-black cast has added one white member as the spouse of Candace, played by Regina Hall. So, I wonder, is adding a white guy to an otherwise all-black cast the equivalent equivalent of adding a child to season five of any sitcom? Oh. <laughs> All this talk of the cast, I mean, they have great names, tough names, which gives us another opportunity Ooh. to introduce the cast as if they're in an old NFL Films Presents <laughs> favorite <laughs> new segment. One of our new favorite things that we love, we love to do, we talk about as if we've been doing forever. <laughs> Twice now. All right, here we go. Uh. Long forgotten rivalries, given the chance to boil over, will come to a head on the gridiron of life as familiar members of a tight knit crew clash once again amidst the blustery frozen tundra of a cold December. You're the best man holiday starting lineup Day Diggs, Terrence Howard, Morris Chestnut, Harold Pirineau, Eddie Cibrian, Richie Lawrence, Eddie George. Sorry, Eddie George? Yeah, Eddie George is in it. He's actually a football player, and he plays himself. Him and uh, Greg 
Greg Gum. Greg Gumble. Greg, Greg Gumble. Don't let work with Greg Gumble. Gumble. I don't know. Greg Gumble. So. Greg Gumble. Greg Gumble. Greg Gumble. Greg Gumble. <laughs> Only yeah, when you do it. When I do it, it doesn't work. No. All right. Enough of that. Unless I, I almost called him Greg Grumble. This bit will Wait. be back. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Second chance. The second okay. string. I'll get it. I'll get it. Day Diggs. <laughs> Derrett Howard. Morris Chestnut. Harold Perrineau. Eddie Cibrian. Richie Lawrence. Eddie George. Greg Gumble. <laughs> Greg <laughs> Gumble. I can't do it good enough to go, Greg Gumble. <laughs> anyway, The Real Housewives yes. of Atlanta, the movie, <laughs> sees a reunion of all these characters, and with that, all kinds of dormant tensions and romances and middle-aged problems, which they will need to overcome under the close confines of their Christmas getaway. So it's kind of like the black chill. Let me recap what we learned from the trailer. Pretty sure this is what the film is about. Guys play pool, ladies drink in the kitchen. Guys joke with a white dude about how many of them had his lady. Oh. Ladies drink on the couch. Guys dance with hats and suits. Ladies ask to borrow a phone. Guys play pool, more pool. Everybody eats dinner, somebody has sex, and nobody says much about Christmas. Ooh, I want to uh, see this. That's pretty much it. Well, actually, we're lucky to see this film at all. Um, after Tyler Perry's lawsuit, hmm? he okay. heard that there was a movie being made outside of the... Tyler Perry acting guild, and so, of course, he took action. Uh, Malcolm yes. Lee made Scary Movie 5, Roll Bounce, and Undercover Brother since the first The Best Man. Clearly, this sequel was not a priority. You'd think by now the Best Man franchise would have had at least five, maybe ten films under its The Best Man belt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Malcolm Lee, you've robbed us of such on uh, video-on-demand pleasures as The Best Man Cookout, <laughs> The Best Man Mortgage Payment, the best man garage repair, and of course, the best man hernia operation. Right. Yes, it's a Christmas movie that's released before Thanksgiving, flying in the face of the stereotype that black people are always late. <laughs> it's early. Uh, the studio. It's Paul, a compliment. Paul, that's because the studio wanted to get a jump on the December release, Jumping the Broom Hanukkah. Oh, we have that coming. <laughs> Wait, let's give that its proper due. What was that? No, two things are playing at once. All right, screw it. Uh, well, that, that movie's over. So, okay, well, there you <laughs> are. movie's come and gone um, already. All right, now, here's something I was just saying about. This movie was released in 1999. The exact same cast, everybody came back, and it's how many years later? 14. 14. 14. Yeah. I would like to compliment Wait, this movie. Is that right? 13. 13. 13. I can't do For math. Two math things. is hard. Math it makes me two sleepy. Two things. I think, I think it's very cool that all these Why people are still with us. I yeah. mean, well, that's I think fantastic, all, right? I think the other movie kind of started a bunch of their careers. Yeah, right? and all, that is pretty cool. Yeah. And then they're all coming back to it. It's not always easy to do that. It must and have been a second, fun movie to make for them. I'm just yeah. saying they always say black don't crack. These people look fantastic. <clears throat> they they, they yeah. look friggin' fierce. You know, White Diggs. people could not do the same show 15 years later. I mean, I'm just saying. When did Rent come out? Rent was like five years ago, right? And Tay Diggs uh, did that on Broadway like ten years before, yeah, and they said, well, "I don't know if we stick him in Rent because they're all because he looks when they did it. He, no, he looks great. All of them look really beautiful. It's kind of disgusting, actually. I don't yeah. look. I don't. You what know, was the movie I don't he made? Stack his... up to any of these no, guys. Remotely. It looks like they just made the other movie like a year ago. It's stupid. Was it Wedding to Exhale was the sort of first Tay big Diggs? break of Tay Diggs? Was I... that like? Oh uh, no no. Uh, uh, how Stella got her groove back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those okay. are the same yeah. thing. Oh, that's, right? a, now that's a movie like whenever I, I, I go, oh, what movie? Are, that's a really strong black woman and any woman movie. I like that movie. Yeah, but, That's yeah. just about a woman going down to the Caribbean and getting laid by Dexter, Dexter St. Jock. <laughs> that's I mean, all it's that about. Stella got her groove back. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what it is? Yeah. Or it's yeah. a May December romance movie? Yeah, but, movie? but, but she, she gets dumped. And again. So she groove got, is a euphemism for her groove. Yeah. Getting her, your hootie power hootie. back, her not groove. just her hoo hoo. Oh, okay. Just getting in there and feeling like a woman again. Yeah, Come get, on. getting in the groove and feeling yeah. a woman. I'm with you. Are you guys in the holiday spirit? Not yet, not yet. Not it's yet. too early, right? Thanksgiving Boy, will do it. The Grove is already Christmas up. It's in the spirit. Isn't the the Grove yet? Yeah. No, it's no weird. they've got Santa's. They've got the tree. Shut they've up. They've got the oh. Target's got the whole section. And, uh, this is two weeks really? ago. This is two weeks ago. The entire Grove. They've got Santa's house. I mean, my favorite. Now they haven't put Christmas music on yet, which is good. But you got. I'm it. not even done with my November candy yet, so I still have plenty of From, tootsie rolls and lollipops, yeah. which is all that exists come November 15th when right. you're going through your Halloween candy the and your last... bucket of candy. All you've got left are tootsie rolls, lollipops, and some Charleston and shoes. And the combined <laughs> tootsie pops. Bit of honey. Yeah, exactly. Tootsie pops last forever too. But, but you can't. This this is such a uh, in in between times of you know summer movies and the. 
big winter movies that are coming out. Like this is that sort of time where like you can't release it in a couple weeks because you're going to get stomped by something. Well, I'll say even bigger, more, but good. even more so than that. I think it's I think it's just what <laughs> dares follow in the wake of Thor. Yeah. Oh. Counter programming. Yeah. You're right. So, oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't a joke. Oh. No. It's People a, are worried about that. Thor more? had the hugest box office. Uh, like overseas in really? a long time when a Disney record apparently for like overseas it's already made over three hundred million. But is that sharing a lot of audience? Because um, I always think that those movies are going going know. to do well with their audience and they make a ton of money. But you're not really siphoning off from you're certainly not siphoning off from Best Man. I don't know. I thought the Avengers uh, bl- Christmas wedding it set up a lot of crossover. The Avengers played to every demographic. <gasps> yeah. I, I mean, it really, it's it's a kind of astounding how it's played to every demographic. And I think they said the opening weekend of Thor added twenty million dollars on the opening of the original Thor. Yeah, and that's just the yeah. Avengers. He's, effect. he's absolutely right, though, because the Avengers even gets me to the theater. I really like that whole idea. Well, I've learned a little something. <laughs> hey, you know wanna- what? And I have a feeling that, uh, you know, uh, 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 um, fuck, I can't think of his name. Like Nick Fury. <laughs> oh, Nick, Sam Jackson. Yeah, Nick Sam Jackson. <laughs> you know, that'll draw him in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, that guy has been in more, you know, yeah. they say he's like the biggest star in the world if you take his box because office of the movie he's been in. every demographic likes him. Yeah. 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 And you know who that used to be? Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, oh, for a short right, while. Because I mean, of all the Jurassic but, I mean, you Park take, movies. And but Sam Jackson was. No, uh, I have uh, to disagree about Jeff Goldblum. I don't think I don't think that's like a beloved for for uh, black people going to a movies. They give a fuck about no, just him. for box office. No, I'm for, just saying for hits. Oh, he was in. Uh, oh. a I thought you meant man. like playing to everybody. No, the non-leading man that happened to be in all the big blockbusters. Oh. His box office was. Um, uh, Independence, Independence Day. Day, Jurassic Park yeah. three, and yeah. one, two, three. And but but else. it's kind of, it's kind of funny because the, the movie guy's a pedia term for that is a Paxton, which and is which Paxton. is someone who will not distract from the special effects, right? <laughs> right. Like, right. He's not really that big a star. If you put Tom Cruise in Jurassic Park, I don't know if you get a whole lot more money, you know, made. But yeah, you know, you know what your movie needs? Ted McGinley. <laughs> Every movie needs Ted. McGinley. Uh, can I throw one more thing at you? I also sure. think that maybe what the Best Man Holiday might be having a, going against it as far as box office. I just thought of this was not only is it a movie that when you look at the poster you go oh am I going to go see that movie because I don't know how many of us rush out to see like the Tyler Perry movies and all those you just kind of like know about them or you don't but also I think this is a chick flick so it kind of uh, has. It is. It is. It is right. You're right. Dudes won't go like, see like this. this. I don't is care a movie who we that are. The girlfriend want says, the we, boy to be like. We right? saw your movie. We saw Thor last yes. weekend. Now we're going to see my <laughs> movie. I, I think this is kind of a chick flick, which also, no matter who's in it, has a lot of. Yeah, trouble. you're right. It is a chick. And flick. it plays you know? to an audience the way Thor does. So you know, Thor. If Thor played to its audience, maybe the second weekend will be a little drier. And if this really hits its audience, it could be it could be big. But yeah, I if- think it'll fall <laughs> second to Thor. Thor will continue to have. Yeah. Big run. I, I just had a flash in my head when you said that that there would be after the credits another ending that would tease the third best man holiday <laughs> with some sort <laughs> of Sam Jackson. Tease of Samuel the, yeah. Jackson will be there. <laughs> yeah. Morris Chestnut, I want you to join the event. You know what? I'd be there. I would see that movie. I'd be interested. Okay. <laughs> now, usually sequels are made within a few years of the original film so that the audience doesn't go too cold from the original hype. Mm-hmm. Now, like Morning Star, was that the movie you said? I had to remember Evening what that Star. movie was. Evening, Evening Star, Star was a sequel to. The last Terms of Endearment. Oh, Terms of Endearment. Terms of Endearment. Oh, Endearment. oh, yeah, yes, you're right. Last Picture Show, last Texas picture Show, Texas Phil. Who knows what that movie I mean, is? I mean, what weird movies movie. to sequel at all, but the, 13 years later? Wait 15, a minute, wait. Yeah. Hold on. 20 years later? Last Picture Show had a sequel called yeah. Texasville? Yeah. And I think it's... They got Jeff Bridges. And they got Jeff Bridges, yeah. yeah. The Last Picture Show with Sybil <laughs> Shepard. <laughs> he, he's clarifying. Yep. Hang on. Wow. And it was written by McMurtry. Friend of the show, right? Friend of the show. Sybil Shepard, actually friend of mine and friend of the show. I've seen her semi... Disrobed. Nice. Oh. Good for you. That's now, someone full you'd want. Her that driver. To the world. Will she still be your friend? Absolutely. Okay. She's probably proud of it. She's hot. What are you kidding? I was forced to see this. It wasn't voluntary. <laughs> <laughs> Here, look at this. Is yeah. this mole growing? Just take a look at that for me. Now, Marvel Studios has taken this to another level by putting out two movies every year to advertise one in 2015. <laughs> but every once in a while, a sequel is made too late for everybody to care. Turns out that the Hollywood uh, rule is after 15 years, you're no longer allowed to make a sequel. Do you know that? Oh, yes. Oh, There's a the rule. codes and practices. Now that you say it, uh, I remember it. Yes. <laughs> uh, which is why the Best Man Holiday rushed its sequel into production last year, 14 years after the original, just getting it in under the wire. Oof. Now, this made us wonder what other films from 1999 might be coming out before they can no longer be sequeled. I certainly wondered that. Big yeah. year, 1999. 1999. Yeah. And will they turn to the holiday theme as the best man holiday did, hmm. to use a crutch to bring in people who may not remember the previous? Yes, because that 
bit's funnier that it way. It's funnier. <laughs> now, I believe <laughs> you all have your uh, bit we're about to do. Uh, your Hollywood Reporter. Uh, oh, 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 yes, oh yes, of course, we would turn to the Hollywood Reporter to find out I got, what other films from 1999. I'm sorry. I'm well, no, no, I, think, I, I think my <laughs> Hollywood Reporter is from 1999. <laughs> I would like to say that the Hollywood Reporter is a is an excellent source of news yeah. and a potential sponsor. I have I, my most recent edition. Do you? Now, <laughs> yes. those of you I, I at do. home listening to the podcast don't realize we have actual Hollywood Reporters open. Very those exciting. of you who are watching, so that's is your cue to go to YouTube and not be that impressed with us doing it. I know, that. right? Look at that. <laughs> they are not the same ones we use every time or anything. Well, so. What do we got on the sequel horizon yes. here, Adam? Reese. The light's oh. looking good. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> um, oh, it's, it's, so here's a movie from 99 uh, yeah. that's got a, a holiday theme sequel. Uh, She's All That and a Bag of Toys. Uh-oh. Oh, I like it. Mm-hmm. Payback, The Reindeer Who Will End You. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds heavy. Oh, look, I- I'm noticing that there's yes. a sequel to 8mm, 8mm mm-hmm. 2, You Better Watch Out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which dark actually, film. Actually that... sounds like the title for the first one. I'm, yeah. I'm sure. okay. Oh, this is nice. This is a family film, Ooh. Miracle on Sleepy Hollow. Oh. oh yeah. yeah for the whole family. Yeah, it's for the kids. Well, here no, we go. No Here's heads. a 99 classic, and I'm excited to actually see the, this uh, complete the trilogy. Uh, Blair Witch. <laughs> project lost over the river and through the haunted woods oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Star Wars episode won the Phantom Menace holiday special oh, that's, I actually have a clip from that if you want to oh god no <laughs> we celebrate you don't like well, us no that's a Madala because it's a Star Wars episode oh, oh, oh she yes sounds very... she's singing anyway, she sounds just that. like your mother yeah. ooh, ooh here's one I ooh. think we're all going to enjoy Christmas on the Green Mile Aww. oh well that sounds it, it, as a very tragic ending, but the walk there. Is, uh, <laughs> very nice. Yeah. I don't want to give anything away. And and I think this one might have some Oscar contention. I saw Mommy kissing the other sister. Oh, mm-hmm. wait, we have a clip from that. Oh, I'd I like believe. to hear it. We can take care of each other. Okay. We can take care of each other. It's a spreading a, a message of Christmas cheer. <laughs> yeah. The other sister. Oscar Officially contention. on the naughty list. <laughs> Here we go. Never been kissed by Santa Claus. Hmm. Oh. That's oh. actually a good thing. Yeah. Turns out. Yeah. At first sight of snow. <laughs> Let me just say. <laughs> Nobody remembers that <laughs> first sight. At first sight. Nobody remembers um, that movie. Snow. <laughs> Those of you who have caught up why this is funny, who <laughs> remember some of these fucking <laughs> these movies? These fucking movies are stupid. Uh, uh, actually, here's here's one that's yes. a little a little clever. Uh, Magnolia Two Poinsettia. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wait, nice. I have a clip from that. Uh, yes. Actually, let's play that. All right, not a lot. Not, not a lot happens. Not a lot happens you know, in Magnolia. Uh, you have to be careful, like when you went to see Magnolia with with your children and pets. Also, when you see Poinsettia, do not let your children and pets near that movie either. All right, and also this one's really kind of cool. Fight Club saves Christmas. Oh, I'm doesn't it? Know. That doesn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Makes sense. Oh, Forces of Nature too. Lake Effect. This looks good. <laughs> That's awesome. Teaching Mrs. Tingle all the way. <laughs> Tingle all the way. <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nosed Bicentennial Man. Uh, that's that's going to be a so bring it back Chris Columbus. He's dead. Sci fi thriller, I think. Oh, no. so that's all the Christopher Columbus we're getting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, check this out. On the Sixth Sense of Christmas, which is a holiday sing along. Sing along. Yes, well, of I course. don't say. Is it? <laughs> On the Sixth Sense of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Twelve monkeys time traveling. Eleven ocean stealing. Ten things I hate about you. Nine and a half weeks. Eight and a half is also a movie. <laughs> Seven psychopaths. Six senses seeing. Fifth element. For the love of the game. Three amigos too fast, too furious. And, and a partridge in a pear tree. In 3D. Actually, of course, in 3D. There you go. <laughs> That's wow. how they get you. They get Hollywood you every time. Right Friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, it was 3D, wasn't it? That was very 3D. All right, enough of this nonsense. Uh, definitely... Let's get out of that. That was we're not... all like, where <laughs> are we That now? was good-ass nonsense. Was if anybody's nonsense. tuning in for the first time, that's the sort of nonsense we enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, it's a slow weekend with only one major release, but I want to talk about one of my favorite filmmakers putting out a new film in limited release. Mm -hmm. So look for it in big cities starting this weekend. It's Alexander Payne's Nebraska. Here we go. Yes, there is another movie opening this week along with the Best Friends Holiday, which I think we gave a pretty good preview to a few minutes ago. Sure. You know, I always worry that our pithy style of describing movies will come off as racist when the film has a mostly black cast, but unlike the Best Friends Holiday, our next film isn't colored. 
I mean, I mean, it's black and white. Oh. No, it's black and white is what I mean. He shot it and oh, fuck, we were doing so good. Pithiness always gets you, Paul. Yes. Nebraska's the latest cinematic effort by Alexander Payne, the director mm. of the quirky comedies The Descendants, mm -hmm. Sideways, About Schmidt, and Election, which all featured unique characters not pulled out of Hollywood's big box of quirky comic characters and catchphrases. Payne started out in the 90s, the era of the roaring indies, and has held on to these <laughs> roots by presenting vulnerable original characters in low-budget scenarios that never draw attention away from their humanity. Nebraska looks to double down on that with its sparse locations, a supporting cast full of Midwest characters, and its black-and-white cinematography. Damn. Alexander Payne must be great at winning fights with movie execs. <laughs> the Nobody movie stars that. Bruce Dern, who I guarantee wasn't the big star Paramount was looking for, but who plays a pretty exciting choice when you think of Dern's comic voice, combined with Alexander Payne's style of comedy that has its winking muscle removed. Dern, with hair borrowed from Doc Brown. <laughs> Uh, he plays Woody Grant, a boozing curmudgeon who receives a letter saying he's been awarded a million dollars. Hey! I think our problems may just be solved. Ed McMahon. I think I just won a million bucks. Yeah, Erwin M. Fletcher, you choose. woo -wee. Oh, boy, I lost. Again, sorry. <laughs> Without Ed McMahon's picture on the envelope to indicate that it's a scam, Woody takes it. How will he know? I agree. Woody takes it on face value and heads off for Nebraska, a land renowned for making people's dreams come true. <laughs> he road trips with his son, played by Will Forte, who's been cast as a dramatic lead. Probably not the dramatic lead Paramount wanted either. You know, Alexander Payne must have some incriminating photographs of some Paramount executives to be able to present this degree of his vision on the big screen without having to add at least one teen vampire. The film also stars Stacey Keach. Ah, oh, oh, damn it. What? What's that? Uh, I'm not a Deadpool loser again. Hey up, buddy. <laughs> Dern's son's attempts to pierce his father's impenetrable exterior are intensified when they are waylaid in Woody's Nebraska hometown, where past enemies come out of the woodwork to reveal the sins of the Woody that they know. The film is set in Nebraska and Wyoming, the whitest of red states, magnified by the fact that the film lacks almost any color. So everyone in his small town already thinks Woody's a millionaire, but they also know he has to collect the money first. Right. So why do they get all upset with him when he hasn't yet collected the money? Is everyone that old also that stupid and cranky? You'd think if everybody knows everybody's business in a small town, they'd get their facts straight. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska serves as a metaphor for... Uh, something. I don't know what. But I do know the Cornhusker and Bruce Springsteen fans will be sorely disappointed. All right. Here we go. Uh, I live in a small town, and it is easy to get confused with facts. Well, that's all. I think that's all you do in a small town. That's all you do. <laughs> There's no fun in getting everything right. Yeah. It's yeah. easier if you don't get all the information and then you repeat it incorrectly and then it play telephone with it and i think the real point is that each person he runs into uh, shows the side of the father because the other the other side of the plot is will forte is kind of you know learning about, about his, his impenetrable dad. father probably before he dies i mean i mean he could right. I, I think the character could easily die by the end of this movie. Well, I mean, that or his that wife happening. is going to kill him. Not giving anything away. <laughs> Just no, no, really we don't old. know. But I mean, you know, watch the trailer. <laughs> yeah. you know, look, at, look at what the the son's going to have to I just learn look at how dad. old that man is. He spends <laughs> most of his time with a bandage on his head. So, <laughs> Oh, I the very, when you know. Paul and I went to uh, see this movie and it Wait, started. Wait, you saw this movie? Part of it. I got, Ooh. my tummy hurt, so we had to leave. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, did it, did it hurt? I'd rather not go into it. He was so I mean, I hope you're okay, honey, but making me leave a movie I'm so oh, sorry. An Alexander Payne movie. Oh, but what's really me. cool I'm is you're excited to see. right at the beginning of the movie, you they're establishing where we are, and you see a man walking, and immediately you know it's Bruce Stern. He just has this walk that also says, I'm going to die soon. So I'm just saying, you immediately know what's going on. What an exciting use of Bruce Dern. Yeah. When is the last time someone's used Bruce Dern in Lo such an, in, in like a love, great way? You know? love, a big love. Big love. That's when oh, I. That's, that's when I. But he wasn't a lead. But he wasn't a lead. He was so wonderful. Making him a lead though, that is, is quite a move. Oh my god, he's so gross and awesome in that movie. Is he? Yeah. Or movie. It in seems heel like a movie. Mode, to use the wrestling term, he's a heel. He's a heel. <laughs> he's so horrible, and he has this really wonderful actress that plays his wife, and they're both just. Just they just bite at each other like dogs. It's awesome. Mary Kay plays. I want She's to say. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
Oh, now, this good. movie does not star Sandra O, oh, does it? No. no. Good, because I'll go see it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh. You don't want to see Well, she's married Sandra. to Alexander Payne, right? Is or that the right? girlfriend. Oh. That, that's how she know. ended up in Sideways. Huh. Oh, but she's also good in Sideways. She is. Oh. just annoying. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who this person is. Sandra, Sandra oh. She's on Grey's Anatomy. And she was oh. the one that oh, gets okay, the, yeah. with the Grey's helmet Anatomy. and just beats the crap out of him uh, yeah, in the okay. face. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I've, I am now celebrating my two-year uh, anniversary of saying, I have got to watch Sideways again. I mean, I have really I've been, yeah. I've been saying that for so long. <laughs> Long. What a great movie! Yeah. I think my I think my parents own it. I can probably watch it for there's nothing so. better. I'll, I'll lend it to you. Movie There's oh, yeah. nothing better than the scene where it goes back to get his wallet. How what can... I call the wallet retrieval scene. Oh, Lord yeah. Oh my God, that's the greatest. <laughs> Funniest scene. Yeah. Uh, and if you don't know what we're talking about, go see it. Falls big it, yeah. penis. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I should see it. Um, but Will Forte? That's I mean yeah. that's the move. I think that's great even move. more uh, risky. You know, cool move. The only thing I've seen him do that I'm really entertained by is when he plays Ted Turner. On the oh, Conan show. Yeah, on that That's big, the big, comes big <laughs> buffalo. The big buffalo. fake buffalo, and he just rips Conan a new one and takes off. It's hilarious. Yeah. And there's a stagehand pushing the big buffalo, fake buffalo yeah. he's riding on. Have you not seen this, Adam? I'm oh, not. You need to look oh, that I'm up. It's hilarious. It's yeah. hilarious. And I'll admit to not having seen a lot of his work on SNL. So. But I get the feeling Will Forte is behind a lot of stuff that we don't know he's behind. Doesn't he write with Dimitri Martin a lot? And Don't they have something going on? Oh, yeah. I think well, so. Well, it, who's the one that writes with South Park? Is it him or is that's, it? That's uh, Bill Hader. Oh, that's Bill Hader. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. But I'm excited. I, I welcome this introduction to Will Forte. What better way in an oh, Alexander I mean, Payne movie? I will say in the first 20 minutes, he was very good. <laughs> <laughs> now, did your tummy Steve. end up hurting because the movie evokes such strong emotion in you? Or did you uh, get like. A no, bad... my tummy hurt before, oh, okay. but I was uh, trying Paramount to. Paramount Vantage like to, to step in and say yes. <laughs> 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 I was trying to suffer through because I knew Paul wanted to see it so bad. Bad chili dog or something? I could, yeah, I couldn't. Pull it off. The movie, We're, Bad Chili Dog. Yeah, I, I saw that movie. That movie killed me. And <laughs> oh, Eddie Griffin. And it, was a double, <laughs> it was a double feature. Good Burger, Bad Chili Dog. Right. right? This, the, I, you know, for a connoisseur of Alexander Payne movies, who's batting a thousand, never made a bad one, this combines two of the best elements. You have the uh, old people comedy from About Schmidt. Yeah, you have the road right. trip from Sideways. Right. You know, yeah. throw in an election and I'm down. Yeah, it's pretty classic. I think. <laughs> and we it's... forgot to mention Citizen Ruth, his first yeah. film. Oh, how is with that? With Laura Dern. Oh, movie's oh, fantastic. Great. It's so good. He, it's so good. Again, he doesn't make bad movies. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got to give, uh, I, you just reminded me about Schmidt. The wife character is fantastic Wait, in that. Did he remind you about Schmidt or remind you about he, Schmidt? He about, about Schmidt. About, about you got to say two about twice there. Oh, sorry. About about Schmidt. He's on first. Uh, he, uh, I got to give uh, Alexander reader, Payne a lot of credit. He presents 60 year old women in such a cool way. There's always like the mother in sideways that Naked whenever... in a hot tub. Yeah, that's Kathy Bates. <laughs> such good stuff, you know, and it's yeah. not like they're these. Yeah. They're very meaty. This woman. Kathy Bates did have great. good roles, yes. <laughs> oh. You're so dumb. You're so... D- where's that? You were so shot? dumb. No, it's it's not it. not always uh, queued up. I don't you know. should always have it queued up. I'm yeah, telling I have you, this. you need a button. <laughs> see. Oh, that's all I got. I gave you the app. I sent you the email. He needs app. the app. You need yes. to have that app out for Ready. your uh, stummy or the whatever drum no, 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 crash. No, 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 that's good. I will just plug it directly Instant into the board so Jamie can just turn it up. Uh, you ever get one of those scam things in the mail? And like, I never believed it ever. Even when I was just a kid. the first time ever. Just you just never never believed it. There was a moment in high school when my girlfriend and I got got the publisher's clearing house for her grandmother. And we opened it up, and and we kept reading through it, and we kept saying to each other, "Well, this can't be. We're right. we're smart people, but maybe it says right here. <laughs> if you talk to yourself long enough, yeah, yeah you got a million bucks." I, I did have like uh, six That's months cool. where you know, because you don't have to get a magazine, where right. I would just I'd fill out the stuff and return the thing with no ordering, no magazines, <laughs> and then they would send another thing that would sort of string you along. They had various levels oh. of letters that they send you as you are in contention, and oh, you're in, you've made this round or whatever. Now. <laughs> Now just buy He's some fucking nothing. magazines. Yeah. yeah, you've done nothing. In this day and age with the internet, do you think that that will eventually go away because people aren't buying magazines? Are they still doing <laughs> it though? Maybe. I don't know. Are, I mean, well, yeah, yeah, they have a slutty girl on the ads. You've nice. seen an ad for it? Oh, I don't yeah, see an ad for you that see it on the, on the internet. You'll, 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 I can't believe you haven't seen it. Oh, you got to go to the internet. She's you got and a me short, both, sister. She's got a short khaki skirt. She's got her leg flipped back. You can see the slutty stripper heel, those really, really big ones the girls uh-huh. wear now. Keep she's talking. got a super tight blazer <laughs> and she's got the check. <laughs> and they have sexed that stuff up big time. Now, I thought, I think I have seen a commercial. You see it. 
about it, but it's it's really sad now. It's just one guy in a van and like a single a balloon. balloon. Yeah. He's got one balloon. He's like, here's your freaking check. And then right. the slutty yeah. girl, the heels, trying to walk behind him. And he's signing up for ebooks, and then you yeah. only get e money when you <laughs> win. What's that fake online money? Oh then? yeah, E-coin? I heard about that. Something coin. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Coin? Do you know about Bitcoin. This? Bitcoin. 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 I never heard of that. Yeah, there's this whole community world culture that is exchanging fake money called Bitcoin. And, mm-hmm. and as Just long as, as enough... fake is our real money, but yeah. yeah. But they all agree yeah. you you... it can be exchanged for yes. goods and services. Yeah. Then... Yep. Right? Exactly. Yeah. That's all that matters. Our it's money cre- isn't worth anything. It's, it, it's credits from Star Wars, right? Yeah. Exactly. How many credits <laughs> do I get? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's uh, talk about uh, what we've seen as opposed to what's coming up in another round of. What, 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 what did you see? What did you see, see this week? week? Uh, a little mini round of this, because when our guest gets here later, we'll talk about uh, Thor a little bit. But uh, did anybody see anything else this week? Just Nebraska. If I could predict the future, I don't think we talk enough about Thor. So <laughs> I'd like to actually, if I could predict the future as though I knew how that in- interview was yes. going to go in a few minutes, <laughs> I'd like to say I don't think we covered it well enough. Because Pontif- I saw Thor this week. <laughs> I love the so you passion. sit down in the theater, you're psyched anyway. Right. You get a trailer for X Men: Days of Future Past. Now that'd be pretty cool. Aces. Mm-hmm. Then they give a five-minute presentation of Captain America: The Winter Soldier. That's cool. They show you the you entire see the whole elevator elevator scene. fight, oh, that's cool. and then a whole new trailer with with a whole bunch of new footage and stuff. That's All a right. lot of Comic Con footage. It's then great stuff. Two hours of Thor, two. And then the tag at the end is a scene from that teases Guardians of the Galaxy with Benicio del Toro. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is going back to the cartoon and the newsreel, and the. I mean, it was like a full <laughs> day of like a comic, you know, uh, adaptation movie orgy. It's crazy. Marvel is in. Yeah, it does sound like a, a, a Thor kind of charge. Marvel orgy. That was totally a Marvel orgy. <laughs> yeah, they are. They yeah. know, man. They just got. Huge plans. And and Great. check out online, there's articles going around about the ten biggest Easter eggs in Thor two. Like oh. when like when the, the, the worlds are the realms are converging, mm-hmm. you can see in the realms hints of characters they may be bringing in future Ooh. movies. Or at least hints of characters from the Marvel universe Ooh. that they may not have mentioned. I think yet. part of this this is perfect timing with this whole hipster generation too. Because being into comic books got a beard. and being a nerd, Thor's got a beard. <laughs> I'm saying Thor's got a beard. I'm just thinking that this is perfect because it's working for people your age who grew up with the old ones, and then the twenty somethings who are new and coming into this. This speaks to them too. Who are liking it ironically? Yes, I exactly. Wish, and I, I say this with all sincerity, Adam. I wish I could get as excited about it as you because you. It's a long time coming. No, you have such it's a, a lot of disappointment. Genuine <laughs> and sincere I mean, excitement. But, but I, I think this is what it must be like to be a father. Where you go, ah, the kid likes it, so I'm happy to see. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> here, I know, here it is, Lee. Good for I'm you, happy for Adam. you. That's what makes me happy. Yeah. You like it, I don't get it. Here it is, Lee. You had a lot of little things that you liked throughout the 80s and 90s, mm-hmm. but now the Browns are going for their sixth consecutive <laughs> Super Bowl. Okay? <laughs> Super Bowl six, and they have won all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not some context. And I there is such exciting. a talk of the Cleveland Browns dynasty. And there's no end in sight. <laughs> they somehow keep getting first round draft picks, even though they keep winning you all the what? Super Bowls. You're totally, I, if you made that the Bills, I would totally understand what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Because Might how well. long did I have to live move. with the Bills? Not doing well, at least shit. they were in Super Bowls in the 80s. I know, but then they still tank. <laughs> well, that's true. So disappointing. I think what it would take is if Tom Cruise were to play a superhero. Oh, well, there it, you go. It Ooh. could happen, I would man. have this a total enough, organism dude. over that. Dude, he this was, is big enough. It could happen. They had him, uh, before Marvel got Iron Man back, when it was with some other production company, it was uh, Tom Cruise who was going to do a co-production. He was going to be Iron Man. <sighs> oh. I mean, years, oh. years. This is, and that's the other thing, too. Through the, the entire 80s and 90s, there were all these magazines and dumb fucking predictions. I mean, Submariner was supposed to come out in 1990. And then 92, and 94, and 96. Now they don't even talk about Submariner, but you know. But I tell you, the thing is, they don't put stars in those roles. I mean, and I, and Iron Man gave yeah. Oh, yeah. Re- rebirthed it down. The other than that, Hemsworth, Chris Evans, you know, Marco Ruffalo, everyone knows who he is, but he's not a yep. star. He's oh, not yeah. Tom Cruise. He's not. And as I say uh, it out loud, it probably won't work, and it yeah, wouldn't yeah. work. And that's what you have to do is you have to put, you know. Yeah. Uh, marginally, yeah, and then they really are those people, you know. Yeah, that's it's, true. But I yeah. bet you the stars want to be in them. I it's bet you Tom right. Cruise wants to be Ant yeah. Man. Oh, if he's know? a smart person, of course. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like you should dip your Cheetos in cheese sauce because that sounds like a good right. idea. Ends up being too much cheese. Too did, much cheese. Did you see Thor? <laughs> yeah. Smart. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I go, I, yeah. 
uh, I'll say spoiler alert for anybody listening, uh, and it's only going to be just a couple seconds here, though. Captain America cameo. Yeah, that's good stuff. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah, anyway. I shawarma at the end. But I get a little confused <laughs> by the- I just the, like uh, how neither one of us went for our earphones giddy. to like make sure <laughs> Yeah, we, you couldn't do not Spoiler alert. Lee oh, and I, I were like, I oh no, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> don't, don't we just that. didn't even flinch. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I got a little confused by the realm jumping at the end. Yeah, me yeah. too. There's a lot of it. Uh, that I, I know. It's pretty that, entertaining. I know that what's his name got in, in there play to uh, explain it all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fuck I, I have a word. I saw you the know, shining. No, we talked about it plenty. Go ahead. Yeah, Go. Shining? Next uh, thing. I cut half of what I said out in post. <laughs> there, Paul. Karen and I went to see the shining at the arc light. Uh, yes. This was actually a what little a while. Great place to we watch saw it. That. This is what did you see two weeks ago? Yeah. But um, cut that short. Yeah, we. I just had to mention. Ever since I went to the Stanley Halloween. Kubrick LACMA exhibit, I've yeah. been dying for Kubrick on the big screen, and this was like the Wonderama. And that Wonderama, is the, that the is, Cinerama Dome. That Wonderama, is the biggest big screen. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Domorama. Yeah, yeah uh, it was it. Movierama in there, man, because it was just uh, big and, and beautiful and weird. And t- speaking of Easter eggs, now we got to go see Room Two Thirty Seven. I and totally want to see that. Then we got to get the book. That's the sequel to The Shining that Stephen King wrote. Here's why: because after the movie was over, we had seen it before, but for some reason. On the big screen, your imagination gets captured really very clearly when you see the really short scene of a guy in a bear suit going down on who is he going down on? Some guy like a, Some in a like a tux. guy in a tux, and he's got his ass flaps sticking yeah, out of his bear. Yeah, so you know something thing? else was going on there. I don't know that towards shot. the end of the yeah, movie. Yeah, you don't even notice it until you're sitting in the Cinerama Dome and you went. Oh my God, what just happened? Like, what was that? What, what was that? What, what, what? Everything starts to go a little yeah. bananas in the Overlook Hotel towards the end. Yeah. And Shelley Duvall's running around. I think she yeah. sees the kids, right? And she sees she's, the blood. She's then she going looks down a, a hallway. Room, and there's a guy in a bear suit blowing a. And uh, his pants are open in the yeah. back. And he's going down on a dude. And here's. So I saw that and I immediately wow. went. They I have no theory for that in room 237. Okay. Yeah. D- they don't? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I immediately went on the internet when we got in the car. And I'm on my phone going, what's the deal with the guy in the bear suit? Of course, the internet blows up because everybody's talking about what's the deal with the guy in the bear suit. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Get this, and I never got this before. It's imagery that is presenting the idea that perhaps the father had been molesting the little boy oh, all along. That and, is a and theory. And that's a theory. And that yeah. was also just kind of also saying here is something that's not right that might be going on with this little boy. Because Tony about. is the is the... Creature, the creature that lives in the boy's mouth, mouth. then goes down to his, his stomach. stomach. And he doesn't see Ooh. him anymore when he's in his stomach because he hides. Just saying. It's a theory. What they goes have into- tainted an otherwise yep. charming movie. It's not. It's got some creepy stuff, but I never noticed that until we were in that theater. Yeah. Seriously, I, now I'm completely disturbed by this whole oh, thing. You should, when you go see that scene, you'll be disturbed. I do have a question, though. Yeah. Yes. I have not seen a scary movie in a theater, I don't think, ever. It was great. I don't think I've ever seen a horror movie in It's been a, a long theater. time since I have, really. I, that's why I wanted to go good. see The Conjuring. Yeah, so I'm wondering, is, can you be scared with 70 other people sitting yes. next to you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can. Uh, because I can't yeah. get horny doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, Remember when you were a kid, like, right at our movies, man? I didn't care who was in that's the room. That's because you didn't have years of titty yeah. that you'd seen. Yeah. Think about all the titty you've seen since you were 16. Yeah, I'm totally detitified. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, and lastly, uh, yes. Ender's Game was a, a quality effort. It's like a good film with a interesting, sort of unique tone, but never engaged me emotionally, so I kind of didn't care so much. My God, you just sounded like somebody's high school gym teacher. Quality effort, everybody. Hey, uh, uh, hey Ender's uh, Game, yeah, take yeah, a knee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, S you guys plus. Were, you guys were tough out there. You gave it your best. Everybody but uh, I was never engaged as much as I wanted to be. But try and show a better effort uh, oh, when you show up in Anchorman idea. 2 here. Before, okay? Coach Preston <laughs> reviews movies. Yeah, let's do a locker room review for real. Let's write that for next week. That's hilarious. Okay, so that's Look, uh, we'll continue our talk of what we've there. seen uh, when Everybody we say goodbye knee. to Lee for a bit. And we welcome in our guest, Matt Gorley, right after this 10 seconds of music. Well, they blew up a chicken man in Philly last night. Now they blew up his house, too. Down on the boardwalk, they're getting ready for a fight. Gonna see what them racket boys can do. Well, I am excited now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's a way to bring it. I have to go. (laughs) Depressing. You know. 
I was going to request for the uh, for the intro of our guest, the which is about the first thing I fell in love with on the Super Ego, Ego podcast, was the man with the golden gun oh. score. Oh, Brilliant. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a man with the golden gun. They don't have the lyric version, but yeah. Most people hate that Bond song. It's one of my favorites. Oh, it's it's pretty it. great, you right? You can't not love it. The that lyrics is the... are horrible. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. the yeah. lyrics that are horrible. might make it better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let, that... me, let me introduce that voice real quick. Yeah, You're hearing uh, our special <laughs> guest, who's an actor and been involved with some shows you've probably heard of, like Drunk History and Attack of the Show, and he can be heard in podcasts across America, including one he's been running with a merry trio of cohorts since 2006, Super Ego, Matt Gorley, everybody! Yay. Hi, everybody! Hey! hey. This go. is very exciting. Uh, As a fan of podcasts, this is one of the, the big ones. Yes, oh, we were talking about Super you. Ego, so you were saying... Yeah. Uh, this, this show is, uh, first of all, I think the first question I have to ask is, are you a fan of Fire Sign Theater at all? You know, all? Yes. it's funny, we get asked that okay, the that's, most. Yeah. And all of us had a, a passing familiarity okay. with Fire Sign Theater. I did a little bit as a younger man, but we weren't devotees and we didn't really know their full work and they they aren't really an inspiration of us, but we're flattered <laughs> every time we hear that. Well, and it made us go back and listen, and and we're really flattered. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, fire sign is not really something much people listen to. I mean, it kind of had its day, and I don't know some people if they're really into comedy, like yeah. you know, we'll track them down. There's a type that reveres it. They really, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, but, al- it almost seems like um, obviously it's, it's, it's fire sign is a step up from. The one that's on every weekend now on NPR that I used to think was really funny when I first started listening to it. And now I realize that it is not as funny as I thought. You're thinking about like Prairie Home Companion? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It oh, used to kill variety. me, but yeah. now I'm yeah. not so <laughs> turned on by it. Kills you it. in a PBS yeah. kind it of way. It should never turn you on in any way, though. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Garrison Keebler. Keebler? Or Keebler. Keebler. I'm thinking of an elf. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I found some of the concepts on that really, really funny. funny. And then as I yeah. grew up, I was like, yeah. these are oldie timey. They're just yeah. quaint now. <laughs> They're yeah. too quaint. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's all adorable, and that's at uh, <laughs> gosuperego.com. We're looking up on iTunes. They're doing absurd comedy there. Yeah, uh, not And doing it live, too, right? Yeah, yeah in, in fact, we're on a break from the podcast itself, and then we do live shows. We had a regular monthly sh- uh, spot at UCB, but we took a break, and then starting next year, we're going to do some festivals. We're talking about a tour in the summer, a, a national tour. Oh, that'd be awesome. I don't know for sure if, if we're going to do it, but we're talking, you know, we're talking about it. And now, when you do your shows live, are you doing it off of scripts or memorized? It's No, it's completely improvised. Oh, awesome. Yeah. There you go. We know what characters we're going to do, okay. and we plan for uh, pre-recorded introductions and sound effects that we might need mm-hmm. at the ready, but we, we just... We just say, here's the basic concept with these characters. You're here, and that's all we know. For pre-recorded Great. bits, do you ever have Atlantic City by Bruce Springsteen right That's now? all <laughs> we do. That's all it we pumps. have. Yeah. Pumps have up that. the audience. We, we have 57 channels and nothing on. To, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Now, I don't know if I've heard one of the live ones, but the thing about the, the, the non-live ones is there's such a hyper pace to it. Yeah. yeah. It, it is. I mean, it's almost like I can, I can tell you guys improvised for maybe... 10 minutes or 15 minutes yeah, uh-huh. and then cut it down to three. Yeah. And yeah. Then, so it's just, it just moves so fast. Is and that part the of that way is, you do that? Is cheating because, well, while we're, we're say running 15 minutes, we do cut out parts that aren't working or we'll stop mid recording and say, oh, take that again because like a plane went over or whatever. You're picky or, about the planes? <laughs> <laughs> well, well and then right. we, we laugh a lot. And so I cut a lot of that out. But then part of it is cheating and we, we do tighten it a little bit you know oh, for I, comedic I, effect it's great stuff. it's yeah. so tight i noticed that right away yeah i don't i don't think that's cheating at all i think it's a great thing to be able to take improv <laughs> and tighten it you know just make it it it's just every makes you look like a genius dream. yeah, yeah you're exactly right. Right. <laughs> well we you, try to do it as loose as possible in the room and as tight as possible post production so it's yeah. kind of the best of both worlds that's you know? perfect it's it's a fun formula so in a live show you guys are a little more loose and playing yeah. and the audience of course can watch you kind of joke and <laughs> exactly watch yeah. i mean that's that's the fun of watching improv is you're watching people make the connection right. yeah. you're watching them figure it out as yeah, you figure sort it of out laugh to themselves yeah. and you can there. still hear a little bit of that on I the heard it in recorded Patton. show you can yeah. i yeah. heard him yeah. giggle yeah. <laughs> when there's he was times when it. we're laughing and we can't cut it out because someone else is speaking yeah. and it, it bleeds in but even in the live show 
uh, there is a little bit of a difference because you're so aware that there's an audience and that you can't screw around too much. I mean, you could screw yeah. around, but you have to deliver. So there's a pressure that puts you more on your game than when you're in the room when you can take bigger risks mm -hmm. in a recording room, I guess. Yeah. What I regret not uh, being able to make it to was you guys did a show at Comic-Con this year. Is yes, that right? we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How did that go? It was great. Uh, I mean, it's got to be your element for any show. Like, uh, about... That's a great yeah, yeah, how audience. was the crowd? Absurdist the, stuff or the movies crowd or any geeky stuff? The crowd itself was great. We had a daytime show, so I think it was hard hard to pull for lack of a better term the nerds away from the nerdiest stuff <laughs> yeah so we we had a great crowd and we had a great size crowd it wasn't completely full but they were fantastic and the guests we had were amazing almost to the point where the three of us were just wanted to just sit back and watch you know? <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun yeah. who, who do you because uh i know you get paul f tompkins on your show a paul lot Paul was there we had steve agee we had aaron hayes from children hop Children's Hospital, Jeff Davis from Whose Line Is It Anyway. We had Derek Mears, who plays Jason, Jason. in the new Friday the 13th yes. movie. Oh, we had Bobak <laughs> Ferdowski, who was one of the guys responsible for landing the Curiosity rover on Mars. What? That <laughs> and is... he's a big comedy fan. <laughs> and so we did a NASA <laughs> sketch where we put him in. That's fantastic. I know. That's a great and celebrity. Then, Mars uh, guy is a comedy fan. <laughs> is that? I feel like there's one more You'd person. have to be, this wouldn't you? horrible. Well, this goes to a good question too. Is how's the show evolved? Have you always uh, had? Because I don't think I don't know if I've heard season one. I think well, once you get past the yeah. season, then you kind of yeah. have to buy it or whatever. Right, I, I right. didn't buy any of oh, season who one. Would? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> how has it evolved? Because uh, have you always had Pat Oswalt on it, or did no. they discover it and say I want to be a part of it? Yeah, how would you no. do that? No, well. In the first season, which, by the way, if you heard it compared to season three, it's a lot more raw. Even technologically, it's it's on cheaper equipment and that sort of thing. You can tell. The sound quality isn't as great. Um, but we were friends with Steve Agee and Jason Sudeikis, and really those were the only guests we had on of name. Mm -hmm. The rest yeah. were just a bunch of our friends and mostly us. And, uh, and then in season two, right near the end, somehow... Paul F. Tompkins had heard of us and uh, started listening and followed us on Twitter, and we followed him back and got him on the show, and he really took over from there. I mean, he's basically a member of the group, and he really took us under his he's wing great. and plugged That's us, cool. and then from there, a lot of other people started listening, but even then, we're very bashful about approaching people, so we it would be until we'd hear through a mutual friend that they liked the show. That Wait a minute. This very is, cool. This is kind of like in sixth grade when you're on the bus, yeah. and you know <laughs> yeah. that someone thinks you're no cute, kidding. and you wait to make sure. I've told this story before, but when we knew Paul liked our show and started following us on Twitter, we waited three days like you would, like, I'm not going to call, <laughs> dude, gonna call dude, her back. Don't, don't call him right yeah, away. I'm man. not going to call her back. Oh, Don't call him by the way. We did, it was, I would absolutely be like that if Paul F. Tompkins was <laughs> yeah. following That's me on so Twitter. That's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> that is very cool. And I also like the fact that you made up. You were talking uh, before when we started. We were talking about if you make a product, you have to make your own art, and do you just hope that it's good enough that other people will want to get involved instead of trying to push something yeah. down someone's throats or sell it to them? good for you because well, that's very you. hard but it's really <laughs> exciting the good thing about that was we knew nobody was listening but in the beginning <laughs> so we had perfect. no filter and we we really felt free to do some really stupid things and by the time people started listening we were stuck in those stupid things and it worked out well otherwise i think if we went in knowing there was an audience we would have probably scaled it back or tempered ourselves a little bit and and it was nice to set that formula before the people were there long before the people you, were there. oh this it goes back to this analogy that my friend was telling me my friend leah is a musician and in the back in the old days when people would record an album it's because they needed to make a record of the music that was being produced at the time uh -huh. so they would take these people out of clubs and put them in the studio and record that magic that's kind of what you're talking about. Uh, well, you you. It's already it, happening, yeah. Yeah. and then you record it. Yeah. Of course, nowadays people do it the opposite. They mm. go into the studio and try to make something. Yeah, happen. we got to get an album out. Let's yeah. let's come up with something. Yeah. And and, uh, and again, for anybody who's listening, uh, who doesn't doesn't know, the show is uh, a variety of formats, mm -hmm. and some of them you repeat repeat. Uh, like the, I think the X Wing Squadron, B Wing Squadron. We call it the that, Brown Squadron. That's okay. The, the brown. Well, there's there's Brown. Yeah, brown, X Wing, Brown B Wing, and yeah. Brown Snowspeader. Yeah. So yeah. it's never Red Five. Yeah. It's Brown Five or Brown yeah. Two or yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's the yeah. the, 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 the so jokes funny. are not all that low, bro. I promise. The, I loved <laughs> it. I was telling Adam. I was telling him before as well that um, one other thing I really loved about their comedy was that a lot of times I find things funny that guys write. You know, I'm not a total dick, but I I. Um, 
Um, I don't always understand boy humor, and I I don't li- either. <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes immediately I'll watch a show and I'll know that it's hard and edgy to the point where I feel gross, and I'm like, I don't know if I understand what's funny about that. But that whole X wing Brown wing thing, I started hearing it happening. I was listening to the show, and I was like, oh, I probably won't get this. And then it just won me over and cracked my shit up. It crossed over that gender barrier. It yeah, did. then every once in a while you. you're dropping an actual communique from Star Wars right. yes. in the middle. Yeah. Like they all communicate on the it's Death Star. So it's a good. great format for just having <laughs> inane conversations. And of I, course, the you know, rapid love, fire yeah. speed of just. I love I love at one point, you know I can hear you. <laughs> I'm like, this is the greatest. And now it seems like McConville, because I've, I've heard your podcast a bunch, but I was researching today to see what you're up to. It looks like McConville's doing something called Dead Authors. Oh, yeah, dead authors? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah a, that's we've a, all done that. Oh, we've all done that? That's Paul's This is the first show. I've heard yeah, of it. Yeah. yeah. Brian Stack did it. A bunch of yeah, okay. improvisers have done it, yeah. In fact, the, one of the nights Brian Stack I'm going to listen to the shit we, out of that. We usually do the so Super Ego show at UCB directly following the Dead Authors show. So one night Brian Stack did that. He did our UCB show as well, and he is incredibly funny, that guy. Brian's very cool. And his, Paul and he together is amazing. So yeah, Mark played Shel Silverstein on there. Uh, he's also done ASAP. Aesop. Jeremy did Joseph Aesop. Campbell. Aesop, I use for my contacts. <laughs> but I understand. Jeremy and I did the Brothers Grimm. I did Carl Sagan. Uh, and, Jeremy, oh, I know the concept. To being right? brand new to yeah. this, so what did they do? What, you know, what you know the concept? No. Is? No. Oh. What's the idea? It's basically. It's almost like a prolonged super ego sketch in some way, but <laughs> it's it's. Uh, Paul F. Tompkins plays H.G. Wells, and, yeah. the, and the thing is, he's taken oh, well, his, the time machine. Yeah, he's taken his okay. time machine back in time to bring dead authors to the present to talk about their works, and it's just. Two guys doing character improv for an hour. Yeah, about oh, interviewing right. someone oh. in character yeah. for an hour, awesome. making references from their era oh, or whatever. Did Mikowski did a it's show. It's a blast. Too. Oh, he'd be great. In fact, that. they did four the people from the books of the Bible. I think that's I was the one. in that one as well. Oh, with yeah. Craig Kowski? Yeah, uh-huh. okay. with Hal Craig awesome. and friend uh, of the show. Friend, friend of the show. Of the show. Yeah. He was on the show. <laughs> do, uh, do you take questions from the current uh-huh. audience? We start with an interview, Fantastic. and then you take questions from the audience. You take questions from Twitter. You do a little reading of your work. Yeah, That's it's a blast. really great. great. And you're concept. supported at all times by H.G. Wells, played by Paul F. Tompkins. Yeah, you, so can't, you can't fail. Hard to go you wrong. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. He is. Now, there's yeah. another podcast that uh, that I'm curious about. I just found out about this as well today, but strikes to the heart of a movie guy. Mm-hmm. You do a Bond podcast. Yes. Uh. You do? I do. Matt Myra from the Nerdist podcast, and I do a show, a uh, limited podcast called James Bonding, uh, where <laughs> two guys oh, who wow. love James Bond, and we have an episode That's for cool. every film. And we have a guest on for each episode, and we just we just talk about it. And right now, uh, in fact, tonight I have to go home and watch On Her Majesty's Secret Service again just to refresh myself. But great movie, yeah, uh-huh. the, the most well shot Bond film besides maybe Skyfall. Yeah, I I'd think say. you're probably right. Oh, Skyfall yeah. looks so gorgeous. It's amazing. I mean, Roger Deakins, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. no joke. You know, I mean, yeah. people give uh, 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 Honor Majesty's Secret Service a bunch of shit, but that's actually a pretty good yeah, movie. Yeah, I think it's people are recognizing it's pretty good these days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's like some you serious want a bold stuff. prediction from me. Oh, I, I'm think, excited. Tell think, us. Is this uh, a movie guy's exclusive? It is. Uh, <laughs> you can have to say it's Are you guys ready? I think I get a lot of flack for this, but I think Quantum of Solace one day is going to age into that level of film. You are ah. absolutely goddamn correct. You, thank you. That movie is you. really good. Now, the villain, I can never quite get into. It, yeah. He looks like Roman Polanski. He does. He really does. <laughs> but yeah. he's not all evil like yeah. Roman Polanski in Chinatown. It's the diving yeah. bell and the butterfly yeah. guy, but yeah. walking around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 here's a little thing you might not notice, but in the when that villain is introduced, it's an over-the-head bird's-eye shot, and he's waiting for someone, and he has a rubber stamp, and he has receipt tape, and you can barely tell, but he's just randomly stamping the receipt <gasps> tape, and it just gives you a little bit of insight of, of kind of his weird creepiness. He's not doing stamping it for any reason. He's just sitting there just kind of going like this, huh. and it's really kind of creepy. Little that There's little creepy. details in that film that don't immediately show themselves, and it has some problems, but I think... I need to give it a second look. That movie landed soft on me because yeah, I saw it. Most people, and I saw the, the the opening night when they paired it with Casino Royale. Oh, which see, I that usually seen helps it. Yeah, and I don't know. It kind of was a step opening, down for oh, me because Royale oh, wow. thing is so Casino great. Royale is my favorite Bond film. Yeah, I love. It. So love, I, love I came down a little too much from Quantum of Solace, but I, I revisited the beginning of it, which someone said you oh, got to revisit that car chase. The first five minutes. Yeah, the first five minutes. And I was in. Any first five minutes of a Bond. I was in. So I'm willing to give it the whole thing. Amazing. Yeah. 
I'd yeah. give that whole movie another shot. You again. should absolutely. Yeah, fall in love all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the Bond podcast. You're going to watch uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service yeah. with someone else? No, we. Uh, I've I've seen just that countless it? times, but we watch it on our own, and then we have a guest, and the three of us or four of us, depending on who the guests are, discuss the movie from top to bottom, and it's just a like this. It's just a lot of fun, you know. That's cool. What's yeah. the uh, how many Bond movies have there been? Twenty three official. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to go more than twenty three episodes of the show. No, right? we're, no. Well, we're going to probably. Cover Never Say Never Again, which is the unofficial never, one. Never, never say never again. Never, never say never again. Never, <laughs> never say never again. <laughs> I could keep going higher. Worst Bond yes. theme? Is it, it that or all-time high? Uh, you know what? I'll say it's either that or uh, Madonna's Die Another Day. I have a soft spot for all-time high because that was the first Bond I saw in the theaters was Octopussy. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, might be mine, although I think Did, I made it to Moonraker. Have you ever heard the young, wow, very young, yeah. but, have you ever heard the KD Lang song? For, Surrender from, from Tomorrow God. Never Dies. I she think it's amazing. Until the credits. That should it's, be the yeah. open. And, and it was, was going to be. Songs. And they went, mm, she's just not big enough of a star. We oh. can get Cheryl Crow to do oh, this yeah, mild yeah. folky number. No. I know. Yeah. Plus, she's that one's it. written by David Arnold, who was the composer. And yeah. the Bond films are always best when they're incorporated in the movie. Which is why Casino Royale is amazing. Absolutely. Exactly. You put that music into it, score so And that is a week of quantum but here's something else i'll tell you oh. about quantum yes tell us it the the song was done later by jack white and alicia keys but there was a, a, a song. song written before by david arnold performed by shirley bassey <gasps> and if you hear it you go oh that's all throughout the movie it's that <gasps> cool. da, 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 da. Oh, really it's called no good about goodbye you can look it up on your local youtube <laughs> they got scared of that they didn't think bond they, alone would sell the tickets they needed just, jack yeah, white they want it yeah sometimes they, they try to that. go too hip yeah. Yeah. i do like the jack white song i think that's a pretty underrated uh, yeah. Bond song but it does it sucks because it does not go into the score which yeah. is, i always enjoy yeah even skyfall the thomas newman got it in just in one spot like he had just a little bit of time left but it's not in there enough mm-hmm. you know? well yeah. let me ask you something i ask all of our guests yeah what's your favorite movie of all time oh, yeah <laughs> it might be Casino Royale. No, really? I find that to be an almost perfect film. How many for times me. have you watched it? Ah, oh, jeez, how many times have you taken a bite of food? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I how many times one. have you fallen in love all over again? <laughs> well, and here's a question we ask too, because there's there's a particular thing. Some people, their favorite movie, like I've always said, this Paul and I are big fans of Raiders of the Lost Ark. I am too. Yeah. The unfortunate thing, though, about how I love that movie versus Lee, who's not here right now for this, who loves. Uh, he loves a few good men mm. in that he could just have that on any old time. Yeah. Whereas Raiders, got to start from the beginning, uh, mm. got to go through all the way through to the end. I can have no distractions, which means I don't watch that movie that much. Right, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 I get you. Yeah. 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 I, I can put Casino Royale on and just have it yeah. on the background, but I'll, I'll usually end up stopping whatever I was doing and sitting down. And, and you don't it. mean yeah. to you just slowly you yeah. stand for a while, yeah. Yeah. and then you slowly sink to the yeah. corner of the chair or the couch, and then you sit Well, there's down. a you TV in our office, and that's the worst. I, I, I have the same done. thing. No, yeah. And it's this got is Netflix. the worst problem. I will put it on and say Blu-ray or something, and then I feel like I can get some work done. If it's ever on TV, oh, I feel like you got Like if the world is experiencing it, I have to <laughs> you, be you there stop. with it in real it's time. Like, yeah. You know, Shawshank does that too. Shawshank, you mm. see that? You got to stop. Yeah. I do that. Uh, I do that with Ghostbusters. That's mm. my favorite movie. I, I get that. Can't stop. Yeah. Watching. What is it about Martin Campbell and Bond? Because yeah. outside of that, mm-hmm. I think the Mask of Zorro, that was the first that one. That was right? good. Was yeah. good. And yeah. he's got a rather un-fantastic right. career. Uh, but these Bond movies, he, he mm-hmm. regenerated the franchise twice with Goldeneye yeah. and Casino Royale. And he's oh, yeah, and he looks like the Goldeneye. greatest director of all time in those I movies. I saw him speak once, and it was pretty interesting. He's a surly guy. He's just kind of, <laughs> he's a little cranky, but he's, you know, he's one of those guys that you don't mind that they're cranky because he can kind of back it up. He, do, he doesn't... Um, he doesn't like temper his words. He says, you know, we did a good job here. We did this kind of thing. But he did. So, you know, you can't fault him for it. I don't know. Based on the movies I like of his, he has no business doing Green Lantern anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, like. It, that may have just been a misstep in the first place. That, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure that was a trouble production. I have a feeling, like, uh, whoever's making these superhero movies for DC just is yeah. wishy washy or right. something. Right. Because they just, sometimes they're neither fish nor fowl in, in some ways. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Now, we may uh, cover some of the same ground we just did with our next segment, but we're going to come back to something we covered earlier in the show. What? 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 what I, see? I forgot what, what it was. What did you see this week? week? That's the disco-fied version Very of our exciting. What Did You See This Week theme, where we put to you and to the table, uh, what did you see this week? Well, I 
Should I start with the little ones or the big ones? <laughs> I oh. love when you have multiple options. Yes. That's yeah. a good week. That is, I've good. Got, that is a good week. That's right. Last no, week. No, I've got five. Holy Whoa. Shit. Five. Yeah. Big and movie you, week. Yeah. yeah, you don't have kids, right? No. All right, well, good. Give me a big time and a little. For okay, well, the big... I'm, I'm, I'm saying big in terms of scope is Thor, okay. The Dark World. How fantastic right, was that movie? And little would be the stories we tell by Sarah Pauly, the documentary about her family. Have you guys seen that? No, oh, no I'm, writing, I'm writing it down. Fantastic. That Karen's sounds got this awesome. growing list. It's Thanks huge. to this. Every week Sarah, she has Sarah, Sarah, who? Yeah. Sarah, Pauly? Sarah Pauly? Yeah. Sarah Pauly. I don't know. She's she a was... Canadian actress and filmmaker. She was in um, Splice. Do you remember that horror movie where the, she and Adrian yeah. Brody, Brody made yeah. a like sex child? <laughs> <laughs> a sex Not from child? their sex, like a child that ends up as a demon thing that Adrian Brody. I don't know. I don't want to spoil. Already then. Wait, Sarah Polly. She was in she was wait, Sarah Su- Polly. Yeah. Sunset Strip, oh, I think right? Polly. No, you're talking about the uh, from Go, right? Uh, uh, I haven't and, seen and, Go. And wasn't she in How Hartley's uh, How Hartley film? Do you know How Hartley at all? No. Okay. Have you guys ever seen the Canadian television show Slings and Arrows? I've never seen it. It's that. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I told that really over good things, She's yeah. Um, but this is a documentary that she did. Her mother was an actress and her father was an actor. And uh, Dawn she, of the Dead. That's the no. Oh, oh yes, she is. Yes, okay. yes. Sarah, Sarah Polly. Yeah, yes. blonde. Yeah, I think she might be an Al Hartley. Wasn't she in the, the Sunset Strip <laughs> show too? Or am I thinking the wrong person? Studio Sixty. Oh no, I that's so. Sarah Paulson. Paulson. Yes, no, just to make things confusing. Oh no, you're Sorry. thinking of Jane Pauly. <laughs> Damn you, <laughs> Sag. <laughs> Polly Shore, I think. I'm clearly understanding. Jane Pauly Shore. I think we've discovered a new character. Let's What's improvise that. Okay, I want to make sure I get it's this. It's called the stories we tell, or Thank just stories you. we tell. I think. Oh, that'll be good because I don't yeah. type very fast. But it's a it's an interesting documentary because she finds out pretty quickly that her family is not what she has been told. Oh really? She's documenting her own family. Dude, and I has love that shit. A revelation I love it. in yeah. it. And the way she structures the storytelling because she not only does uh, reenactments that you don't even realize are reenactments for a while because they have some original Super 8 footage, but they kind of meld two things. Then they do interviews, just talking head interviews, and then she has her father write the narrative of what happened and they also show him recording that and (gasps) splice that in as a sort of narration throughout the piece after the fact. It's it's really really that sounds amazing. All right, that yeah. sounds really good. I <laughs> yeah. love stuff like that, especially crazy Canadians. That sounds so interesting. Yeah. I forgot the big one. What was the big movie? Thor. Thor. Oh, we, we See, gotta talk about. Now, where do the right? two come together? <laughs> like, <if> you, <laughs> it was a double feature at the Cinemaplex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I saw it. I'm, I know Adam did. Karen probably not. No, so much. I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, what'd you think? I I uh, didn't. Uh, what? Didn't, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Adam is our resident I, superhero I, apologist. I am pre obsessed. I'm pre obsessed. I was. <laughs> you, know what, you know what I was watching last night? Green Lantern. Uh, I just shit on it, and I'll still what? watch it. I think I understand what you're saying because what what you might have for superhero films, I have for Bond films, and that even the worst ones, I love to watch. And I'm not saying yeah. Thor is one of the worst ones. I think I've just hit my limit. It with superhero films, I just was not invested. I can't say it's a bad movie. It's pretty well made. Most of the acting's pretty good. I think I just was just. Uh, I think I'm just like tapped out a little. Interesting, because yeah. uh, and people always say, oh, they're releasing so many superhero movies and stuff." I believe there was a time in Hollywood where they released up to three westerns a year. You know, like <laughs> right. I don't know if we're really yeah. going nuts <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah, and you don't really get any westerns anymore. I think that's going to happen probably for superhero films. Yeah, that's it's true. It's coming. Winter's well, coming. Yeah. They might yeah. hit a hit a wall. Yeah. Well, and, hey, it can end. Uh, sorry. And, it, that's all right. It can end any day because this is this this amount was unforeseen because I've been such a live action superhero movie. I always loved the live adaptation, like from the Hulk TV show. Oh yeah. On yeah, as a kid, yeah. Hulk, Wonder yeah. Woman. I mean, Christopher Reeve. And yeah. to this day, when's the last time you saw Superman the movie? Uh, about four months ago. I, okay. I watched oh, all yeah. the Supermans not too long ago. <clears throat> is yeah. that not what is he doing in that movie? That's just. I don't. I've never seen a performance like it where you're like, this this guy just. I don't. I, there's just something. He is Superman. He he fucking is Superman. But not only that, the direction in that film and his performance is worthy of like golden age musical comedies. When he's doing Clark Kent and the choreography oh, in the in the Daily Planet and they're you know s- s- like twirling through doors, yeah. it feels like a classic. And I mean this in the best way. Like yeah. A, like mm-hmm. a great. Sort of Doris yeah. Day movie, well, and, or and, and you know, <laughs> the Metropolis feels that that way too. It feels yeah. like it lives in that era. Yes, oh. even though it's, it's even though it's singing color. in the rain. Yeah, even yeah. though it's yeah. 
Yeah. You know, even though it's updated to the 70s or whatever, it still right. feels, the, Daily Planet feels old school. Oh, yeah. I love those. Those first two movies I, I oh. really, really love. It's yeah. amazing that the that the look and feel of that first Superman movie is never again replicated. It is the full, widescreen, mm-hmm. beautiful, bright colors. Just mm-hmm. everything is just so crisply, perfectly composed. And then the rest of them are just kind of shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I felt that way. Actually, the last time I went back to Raiders of the Lost Ark, I couldn't believe how... Technicolor, it looked like classic Hollywood. Yeah. That Temple of Doom and Last Crusade do not have. There's yeah. something glowing. There's something soft about it. It's uh, it's. Amazing. I feel like that yeah. about Ghostbusters. It is you watch it way, and though. it's like it magic. Yeah, look, yeah. those eighties kind of films. Timeless. Yeah, mm-hmm. even eighties New York, Superman, Tootsie, Ghostbusters. Tootsie, absolutely. There's something about those films when they're walking through the streets and yep. oh god, it's Superman when he hey Jim, that's a bad outfit. <laughs> 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 and, and, and even with that going on, the crazy pimp that's saying all that, that moment where he turns to him and goes, excuse me. And yes, it's just yes. such a, like, a Christmas. Yes, he's I, oh, awesome. He's no one's, he's no one's touched him. No one's touched him. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah right. look how hard it was to recast that. Yeah. yeah. That is yeah. something. Yeah. Best Bond? B- actor? Yeah. I, uh, Daniel Craig. I, and I, my Bond fandom goes back to childhood. I really think he came in and made that thing as good as it can be. Pretty impressive. Uh, and the prestigiousness of the directors now. That yeah. the old, you know, yeah. let's get Guy Hamilton. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. let's get Sam Mendes. Yes. You know, yeah. they're not joking anymore yeah. with this franchise. Yeah. Mark Forrester is uh-huh. no joke either. Yeah. You know, with Finding Neverland and Monsters Ball. Get him to do Bond. <laughs> Naturally. What? I mean, yeah. it just Sarah it, it elevates every next one. Yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. I wish she would. She would be great. Now, yeah. since, since we've got a Bond fan here, I, I, I got a question for you. Now, a year ago for Thanksgiving, they showed all the Bond films on, uh, or they showed a bunch of yeah. them. Actually, it was a super random assortment. was on <laughs> right. one of the channels. And it was shown in a weird order. Yeah, they do that. I, I, it's, it's so yeah. Spike, I think, did it. Yeah. T vote all of them. And then just, without even planning, me and my roommate, Steve, Watched blonde movies the whole day. God, that sounds like a great day. It was a great day. And this was like, you know, this is like Friday. Uh-huh. So we still got Saturday and oh, Sunday. Yeah. And we're like, all right, we're watching the rest. And yeah. we went and we, we yeah. rented on iTunes. And then I had like a few that I had ripped from an old uh-huh. DVD. And we just and borrowed some from friends and stuff and watched every single Bond film. Now, the question I, I, I posed to you at the end of that is the great thing about the Bond films is there is the formula, which is just yeah, wonderful. Sure, it sure. is wonderful to watch them just yeah. slot in. Yeah. And, it, and the, the, the catchphrase we, we would say is, we've got lair, because at some point you're in that lair. Yeah. You know, the, the villain's <laughs> yeah, lair. Right, yeah. Skyfall, technically, not really a Bond film. No, and... There's not much no, of the classic formula going on there. It's a there. better film than it is a Bond film. Does that make sense? That's, yeah. Would, um, but, but I actually that's a had, very had good some way to put it. issues with it. Just, I don't know. That formula thing, it, Bond films do a pendulum. So it starts off and the formula gets cemented and it goes to You Only Live Twice where there's a, a layer in a volcano. It's mm-hmm. crazy. The formula is <laughs> yeah, huge. Yeah. Yep. It went really big. And so it swings back to Honor Majesty's Secret uh, Service, true. where it gets gritty, and then goes to the Roger Moore years, to Moonraker, it gets batshit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you curse on here? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. So then it goes to For Your Eyes Only, which is very realistic, and then it gets to Die Another Day through Brosnan down to oh, Casino yeah. Royale. And it's, it's like a sawtooth wave or That's whatever. That's true. Yeah. That's true. They end them yeah. right about when they get at their loopiest. Yeah. Like Die Another Day, I think yeah. Pierce, you know, love it, but <laughs> So we've yeah. got a totally goofy to uh, Daniel Craig one coming at some point. <laughs> well, right? I think Skyfall is the first step towards that because they get into some go- like the Komodo dragons. I liked it. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. That was a classic they, move. But they get a little goofy, you know? How and- do you... Yeah. How do you think they're keeping their audience? I think this is fascinating because I don't know a lot about the Bond films. Yeah. Because I know that the older ones, we were all children and we were into those. And then as we became adults, they started to change as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. And now that there's new, there's all the newer kids coming up and they're getting into the movies, how are they doing that? They're just reinventing themselves. And so Connery was the classic Bond. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lazenby didn't work for the public so they went back to Connery and then they brought and in Connery just did not want to be in that movie no, he, is, to him. he is is, is that the Vegas through. one that's yeah, the Diamonds, Diamonds are Forever boy that yeah. is a yeah that is a shitty film yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love it for that reason it's one of my favorites oh really it, because it's just awful it's shot on, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> shot on a Kojak budget right uh, yeah it's totally a Kojak budget <laughs> oh it's that movie you, I mean, Sean Connery, you can see his ass at one point in the movie. He's hanging right. up his clothes. Yeah. Let me but put that on my but list. But it's like, it's, it's a rough time for Connery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that Never movie is, but, is a curiosity. But then the next movie, Live and Let Die? Yeah. Out of the gates. Great, I yeah. think. I, I mean, love it. Strange I film a little bit. But yeah. yeah. I, the voodoo and stuff's a little wacky. But yeah. A little yeah. wacky. I guess no matter what age you are, sex... 
and mm-hmm. hot cars and hot chicks and being debonair and it's yeah, always it's a in, magic right? formula. Yeah, yeah. There was a period during the Dalton years where the public wasn't really buying it. Um, I didn't mind him, but that was I a like time when I was heavy kill. into Bond. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Um, I have an interesting story about that. If you if you want to, I don't know how much time. Yeah, big, oh, yeah. please. Big because action I, set pieces in that movie. Yes, yeah, I got sold so, on him finally by my roommate a yeah, year ago, I like and him he, too. that's his favorite Bond. Is and, Dalton? Yeah. yeah, he's rough. I give him yeah. that. He's not joking his way he's, through movies. He's the closest to Fleming before Daniel Craig. I yeah. Think was. yeah, these guys have consequences, you know. Yeah. After a while, bullets were just bouncing off Roger Moore, and it wasn't yeah, as fun to it watch. Wasn't, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I uh, last year when Skyfall was coming out, I had done some little write ups on the Bond films. I was ranking them, and um, anyway, so License to Kill comes along, and I was writing about Robert Davi, the the villain in that movie yeah. from Goonies and um, uh, Die Hard, and he's a, just a classic character actor. And so I had had a run-in with him as a performer a long time ago where he was just, frankly, a jerk. Oh, great. And so I was just joking like in the in the article that Robert Davi's a dick, and he's the villain of the movie. I made him the villain of the piece. I wasn't even thinking anything about it. Right, Later that he's day, not going to read it. No, oh. right. Later that day, I get both an email and a response on the blog saying, why don't you talk to me in person? Could be fun. Like, he was upset and he was angry. What? And I, I, I wrote him back and I went, I'm because he thought I was insulting him politically or something, and I went, uh, and I don't know if he knew exactly what was going on because he wanted an interview. I don't, I don't know what he wanted the publicity. I think he thought yeah, I was a journalist right? or something. Oh, so, please. Okay. Long story no. short, I wrote him back and went, "Hey, to be honest, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so snarky, but I did meet you once, and you, you just were a real jerk. But l- that's neither <laughs> here nor the there. You had balls to write that. I did, and I oh said, but God. but I followed it up with, "That's neither here nor there. Let me take you to dinner, and I will apologize because that was that was uncool of me to do it like that. And I would love to hear you talk about Bond. Next thing I know, we're at a four-hour dinner, the two of us. Oh, oh my God! And, awesome. Uh, just. But only like a percent of it was talking about Bond. I wanted it to be more. And we really Absolutely. hit it off. And he turns out he's a real gentleman. I mean, oh, I intended to buy him dinner. He sneaked the tab. Oh, my God. And this is the greatest super, story. Super, super nice oh, guy. Fantastic. Really intense. Really passionate politically. <gasps> but but very, very interesting. Special guys. Agent Johnson? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Special yeah. Agent Johnson. Yeah. 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 That's why he... And <laughs> both of those guys are in License to Kill. Both of those they guys. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, but, and it's such an ultimate... 80s it's not mm-hmm. only an 80s bond movie but it's an 80s movie yeah because yeah. it's got those guys yeah, in it and right. yeah, there's yeah. All see that's of... the thing the reason he like handled it silver. like that is because he knows how he is and i have a feeling he wrote back to you because he's like all right here we go again because yeah. he's used to him and you're not what were you writing for <laughs> you know? that's what were you cool for i was just writing part? on my on your personal on blog your, yeah <laughs> my god oh, you have a yeah. talent for being discovered my friend in the wrong circumstances somehow on this vast internet you can find matt Adam that's and I it. have this series of tweets going out at the movie guys where we'll just say something like, so that's all the Natasha Henstridge we're going to get then? Right? Like oh, anybody yeah, that just really? suddenly disappeared? Hey, yeah. so, so is that all the uh, Patsy, Patsy Kenseth Kenseth we're, getting? we're getting? Right. <laughs> and so I sent one out. I Greta said, uh, so we're done, with, uh, we're done with Casper Van Dien then? And then yeah, I get a that. tweet from <laughs> Casper Van <laughs> Dien. <laughs> and all it says is, what? <laughs> you should have we invited have dinner, him I, out I, I, to that's dinner. My mistake. I should. Now we know. Everyone. I had 140 now characters. Now. I like, wow, that's a great idea. You just fish for the ones like yeah, Josh Hartnett or Chris O'Donnell. Oh, you know, Josh Hartnett. Who you know Good is Lord. out there doing their own search for yeah. their hashtag. Yeah. Where is Josh Hartnett? He's right back here. <laughs> <laughs> He's, behind the He's holding up the wall. I watched the faculty in uh, ha- Halloween H2O that he's in both of those in the 90s, and there was this distinct haircut he had. Do you remember this? <laughs> like, like he was wearing a mo from the Three Stooges wig that had been cut and put lopsided yes. on his head. You're right. It's a phenomenon that never existed before or after. It's like, like, um, maybe it was a bad haircut. It's like, you know, price cut. But it was something. his thing. If oh. you look it up, he had this in multiple movies. He certainly had it in every paparazzi picture. <gasps> and I can't wrap my head around it. It's so strange. It's honestly cut purposely bad. And that was his like slacker he was grunge thing. Or covering something. up like a bald spot or something. <laughs> no, it, he has a good head of hair. Good it, hair. I'm telling you, it was a choice. It was oh a weird choice. It was invented for him by him for a uh, Yeah, by years. a blind person. And who you know, that's add... kind of amazing. I was talking to somebody else we had on about how when you're a certain size name, you can look however you want in yeah. the movie. So he could look different, and like the makeup people could have said suggested something else, but he was big enough to go. No, I'm going with this. I think that he had that look cultivated, and they all went. We got to capitalize on his teen heartthrob <laughs> thing. That yeah, it was. It, it's all you right. can look, Google it up. Nineties Josh Hartman. He did disappear, <laughs> yeah. right? 
That's, that's all, all the heart yeah. network getting. He's, I mean, he's probably home <laughs> sticking pins in a Chris O'Donnell doll because at least O'Donnell showed up on TV, right? He's an NCIA. Uh, yeah, well, actually, which I think Josh Hartnett will uh, inevitably end up doing, like yeah. some remake of a classic story on TV. Streets of San Francisco. Oh, with, uh, yes. With Josh Hartnett. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, we're on the verge of the holiday season here, so I want to launch into a holiday movie preview while we have uh, Matt on board. Now, you remember, may you remember this scene from Scrooge with Karen's boyfriend, Bill Murray? Oh, I love Mr. Bill Murray. Cross, it's time for your Christmas list. Okay, read me the list. I want to get this over with. Sammy Goldberg. Bethel. Lou Parker. Send him a VHS home video recorder. Colonel Tom Parker. <laughs> The bath towel. Oh. <laughs> Tamara Forstall. VHS. Okay, so you are... <laughs> So you are Frank Cross, oh, okay, each great. one of you. I get and this based right. on what you yeah. know, or what the, what I'll tell you about the following upcoming holiday time award season films, yes. you tell me whether that film gets a VHS home video recorder. Uh huh. <laughs> and that's the better one, Excited. right? Excited, yeah. 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 Or a bath sure. towel. I like bath okay. towels. All right, it's a simple okay. game. Okay. Um, okay. The Hunger Games Catching Fire. Uh, I, I'm going to go bath towel, because I, you know. Yeah. I'm a, Anybody? You're going to make money. You want to ride the, the money train? The or? movie yeah, but... is a bad time, but my enjoyment of it will be a VHS. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, you're right. I have, a, I have a, a guilty pleasure for those movies. That's it's a long she, story. That but... chick is super hot. That's why I yeah, do it. Yeah, you can't beat that concept of kids fighting each other. <laughs> killing each other. Yeah, VHS. Yes. Royale, VHS. Whatever, you yeah. know what, Matt's bringing me yeah. around. I do yeah. like the idea of children killing each other. How did they so, get away with that? I don't get it. Yeah, how is it more up, 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 uproar? Because yeah, we really, are very yeah. post-Columbine, I guess. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but we're not <laughs> very <laughs> post-Sandy Hook. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I know. No, but it's a game. I guess people think, you know, Well, yeah. That's yeah the idea. People got blue hair and shit. You know, I think it's purported to be a comment on society. Like, yeah, but it really is just kind of exploitation. The delivery man. What is oh, oh, oh Vince Vaughn gives Vaughn? birth to five hundred yeah. uh, no a towel uh, please towel because yeah. it needs towel. to be clean because it's gonna have just too much heart <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. you're gonna have to sit through yeah. a third act yeah. there's gonna be too much heart that's not how point, we were introduced towel. to Vince Vaughn no and any yeah. movie that is now marketed with a white block font and a red block font I'm just out you know <laughs> I don't know why that's, that's your shorthand now like yeah. scary movie and it's gone <laughs> to now these movies it's crazy yeah that's your that's your line. The line you draw in the sand. Yeah, yes, that's right. No uh, weird font. Bad no. font choice. Talk about funk, uh, wonky fonts. Frozen. Disney loves. Oh, Disney oh, towel. Yeah, towel. I, no. I've seen one poster for it. Yeah. So towel. It looks towel. way no, wacky. No, 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 no. Bath towel. Yeah. Bath towel. Uh, Actually, hand towel, not even bath towel. <laughs> Small <laughs> one. Yeah. Absolutely. Inside Lewin Davis. Oh, who uh, oh, uh, VHS. VHS. Oh. In fact, that I'm gonna do like uh, three. Color big screen projector that they would have at Pizza Hut. <gasps> oh, Wait, forehead, the forehead VHS. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna give them a laser disc. Shoots it up yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, laser disc. Yeah. The Hobbit, the Desolation oh. of Smog. Oh, VHS. Bath towel. Yeah, I'll do VHS. I, I enjoy Karen, it. Karen, not surprising with the bath towel. Oh, Those are typically uh, movies at Christmas where I will go by myself in the afternoon to like an afternoon seating on mm -hmm. stadium seating, and I will enjoy it completely, but also take a nap right in the middle. <laughs> I know. I fall asleep okay. in the theater. I can lying respect down. that. <laughs> yeah. I can totally respect I just, it's that. It's a guilt. I just love okay. it. Okay. Yeah, and you're just yeah. enjoying it. So it washes over sure. you. you know, All I, right. I, I'll, I'll give you I that. I got to tell you, the, one yeah. of the reasons I like it is, it, and I did, I actually fell asleep during The Hobbit. But not because it was boring. Not because it sucked. I was tired. Oh my god! Now I was comfortable. Now they weren't doing. I was comfortable. Yeah, this is the point. This is what I like about these movies is because they did the opposite of Lord of the Rings, which is they took one movie and they made three out of yeah, it. Because yeah. again, as we've said, how many would you make? As you many need as you could make a billion per yeah. two. Right. Right. Make three hundred million. Go ahead and make three. Right. Yeah. But uh, so all this, all the nothing happening. It, yes. They got out of the way in the first movie, yeah. and now that's going to be dragons and spiders oh, yeah, and yeah. eagles and okay, but. <laughs> it's so comfortable going back to that world it after is. three Lord of it the Rings is. movies. Oh, I'm I mean, in Middle Earth. And I mean, uh -huh. it's basically a college year's worth of experiences in the first Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm back in college. And I know, wanted to see the 48 <laughs> frames per second version just for the experience, too. Yeah. And then I saw it at the Americana in Glendale, and it was during Christmas time, and I walked out, and they have a snow thing where there's <laughs> a, it's snowing all throughout that place. So I come out of The Hobbit, and it's snowing. How magical. I just had a magical oh, wow. afternoon. <laughs> you totally <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. lovely. Yeah. Uh, saving Mr. Banks. What is that? Tom Hanks plays Walt Disney. He oh. has to, he has to oh, convince right. the, the Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins story, right? woman. That's great. And uh, yeah, it's about the creation oh, of Mary Poppins. I'd say VHS. VHS, on that for sure. And it's Tom Hanks. And it's Hanks. As soon I mean, as you said that, I was like thinking when VHS. When is Hanks disappointed? Do you remember him disappointing you? Oh, yeah. When? And what? Are you kidding me? No, like the last decade. 
This this what? Captain you Phillips is a great return to form. Now I'm talking about uh, Cloud Atlas and Larry. Uh, uh, yeah, I yeah, forgot yeah, those right. existed. And that, that one with the World Trade Center, uh, the extremely oh, long, yeah. incredibly yeah. important. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, fucking, the Spielberg <laughs> one in the terminal. Yeah, what am terminal. I thinking? I didn't even watch this Tom Hanks movie for ten years. With his yeah. crazy I'm accent. I'm thinking back to the last one. That but you if you forgot. go back like seven, eight years, then you got the Catch Me If You Can, Road to Perdition, which is a mm. double feature yeah. that's mm-hmm. fantastic. I'm gonna so, go. It's been a while. So, but uh, Captain Phillips is a huge return to form. I don't want to end that conversation without saying that he is fantastic. Yeah, it's a great movie. I'm gonna do. Bath towel, but an embroidered <laughs> video cassette on it. Like it's it's Ooh. a little bit above a bath towel. Yeah. You know? I'm gonna say a VHS playing a video of a bath towel. Sure, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they could get schmaltzy with saving Mr. Banks if they're right. not careful. But I think uh, who wouldn't want Hanks as Walt Disney? It's like I sure. want to see that. So it's a VHS yeah. tape playing a bath towel, exactly. but it's still a VHS. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Uh, Tyler Perry, Perry's A Medea Christmas. All right. Here's the thing. I I think paper towel perhaps might be a good yeah. choice. Uh, a good I'm gonna do like a one of those bathroom uh, recycled brown. Oh no, the kind you, you oh I thought you meant the kind you reuse. Well, that too. Yeah, that, other people oh, no, that's use better. It? That's better. Oh, God, what a waste of nasty my, money those were. My dad that's cloth is the biggest about. Tyler Perry fan. Oh, I don't know what to Who say. Is? My dad. Oh. Is wow. your dad related to Tyler Perry? Does he just like the goofiness of dressing <laughs> yeah. up like a lady and being? Yeah, he does. Big I think house? because we had such a, a, we'd go to the movies a lot in the '80s. So Eddie Murphy and Beverly Hills Cop, and I really think he has a little bit of that generational and like the clumps. Right? It's not quite racism, but it's sort of like, <laughs> oh, this this black comedian is very funny. And remember he, when you know what Wilson used to make? <laughs> yeah, it, it's got a bit oh, of totally. that. And uh, my dad's fantastic. I That's love him, but hysterical. he does like we'll come over and he'd be, like, yeah, have you seen Medea's family reunion? Uh, sit down. We now you're gonna have to have a four-hour you know dinner with your dad apologizing that, for these comments. That is so cute. You know what though? I love this because I guarantee it pisses off Tyler Perry that right. someone can't tell the difference between his movies and Big Mama House right. and the Clumps. Yeah. I yeah. love yeah. that. Probably that is perfect. He yeah he knows that there different people making them but to him that genre does the, it does a lot for him yeah that's, yeah. So that's awesome yeah. american hustle david mm. o russell oh. film with christian bale and mm. jennifer everybody lawrence looks all 70s and porny bradley and bradley cooper oh, Jeremy por- wait a minute that's one where she looks hot right jennifer oh, yeah. lawrence okay yes. i've only seen the poster but the poster looks, looks awesome oh, the trailer's awesome i'm gonna do the all thing right. where you used to be able to rent a vcr player <laughs> <laughs> so they, they get it for a weekend because I, I, I i'm not sure about this yet you got really? yeah too. I yeah. think yeah. David O. Russell is great with yeah, actors. Yeah, I do too. Despite but it's the Lily Tomlin thing. about uh, period '70s mob movies that get so indulgent for me that I don't think I can uh. separate it from a, like a Carlitos Way or something. So you're saying like a that. dorm VHS where you, you know, give me your yes. ID, you yeah. take it up to your room for <laughs> right. a couple hours, right. yeah. and then you bring it back. You know, for and that's some just reason, me. For some reason, now when you mention that movie, I close my eyes and I see that kind of orange color you got from the 70s mm-hmm. that's washing over me now. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. that's a, yeah. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. All right. Yeah. This is a tough call. Yeah. I I was I wasn't that interested, and then I read yeah. something about it today, where I'm gonna have to say uh, VHS player. Yeah. The trailer right. looks awesome, but sometimes Ben Stiller taking himself super yeah, seriously yeah, is like a big I don't danger. need that. I don't yeah, need that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hopefully he's funny within the confines of a big sort of super serious story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, hopefully he can pull that balance. Out. I hope it's good, but it probably towel. I think forty-seven Ronin. I don't know anything about. I, I know, know Keanu Reeves is in it, um, and it's a big old chop sake swords and sorcery. Oh, I did see uh, the trailer for it. Yeah, hand towel. Yeah. Hand towel. Hand towel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was quick. <laughs> and uh, grudge match. Oh, oh Rocky Stallone versus Raging Bull. Yeah, towel. Oh, that. How can that be, be f- good? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to be funny. The right? concept so we like, love. We lo- I love that yeah. poster. Looks like it might I, be too. VHS silly. for the poster. <laughs> but I think for the movie, uh, towel. Now, you don't have August Osage County on your list. Oh, it is here, yeah. Oh, oh is it yeah. there? Oh, yeah, okay. we were running out. I couldn't get to a whole right. bunch of August Osage County. Uh, VHS well, that. VHS yeah. that. I saw yeah. that. Fantastic. Oh. You saw the movie I got or the a little, play? A little it's an advanced deal. Advanced oh, deal, yeah. Nice. Actually, we've seen, I've seen the play. The oh. play yeah, the play's oh. great, and that they do a great job if they don't change it. You know how they do that yeah, thing where they sure. ask you your opinion? Yes. I was like, don't change it. Oh, wow. We'll see what happens. I, th- I think Good. August Osage County may be the most I've ever heard the name of a movie before the movie came out in my life. <laughs> That's because oh. you're hanging out with me. And yeah, for you seeing it. But it just sort of comes up too, like, oh, also August Osage County. Like, just in conversation. <laughs> and because it, it's a weird name, I don't even know it's, what that means. August. It's is it August, August in it's Osage kind of County? Like when you uh, yeah, look a at a screenplay. Or is it the August so, <laughs> Osage County? <laughs> no, it's like uh, location and time. So you have your your location is uh, oh, August, August Osage, comma, comma, Osage yeah. County, and it's in August. So it'd be like uh, we're here. We are at the Admirals Club in November. Uh, November, uh, the Admirals the Club. Admirals okay, Club. I got gotcha. you. It's very similar to well, what happens here. So then it just sticks in my head. So every time I hear it, even I mean, it's not always just you too. That 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 is said a lot. <laughs> it's just said a lot. 
I never heard the word Skyfall all the time around Skyfall coming out. I did. Anyway. Well, Julia's paying <laughs> us. So. Uh, let's do uh, one more because uh, curious to see which way you go on Homefront. What's that one? Jason Statham plays the... Uh, oh, it's Commando. <laughs> they steal his daughter. Oh, really? I think. Can but you, it's James Franco. They do because it's J- Jason Statham moves into some uh, Louisiana backwoods joint. Uh, and his daughter gets in a fight at school. Well, the parents take revenge on him, but then it turns out he's an undercover cop, and the parents who have the kid that the girl beat up are selling meth, so then it's like a cops and robbers thing, oh, but I'll, there's... I'll uh, check that out. It's James, Fran- it's, it's it's James, James Franco. It's James Franco is the villain in a Jason Statham movie, which I kind of got to give yeah, a VHS to that. Yeah, right? sure. I, uh, yeah. I, I think the way I would go with that, because I, I think that it deserves some respect, is a bath towel that you would use to clean your guns and fish. Oh yes, which is a sign we Shop saw in a towel. hotel once. Yeah. Shop towel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> All right, well, we got uh, one more thing for you, Matter, before we uh, wrap Please. up with you. Five. Uh, haha, said five. Uh, what? Yeah, five. Uh, haha, yeah. Question. <laughs> and this is Tyler Perry. <laughs> <laughs> That's our theme for five questions yes. for other guests. We, we produce oh. stuff too, like you all oh. fancy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like on your show, all fancy. Uh, wow. Hours of audio editing went yeah. into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, ours is nothing at all like yours. But anyway. <clears throat> And the Cylon sketch. Did you hear the Cylon sketch? No, I love Cylon. Hey, question before yeah. we get into five questions. For, for yeah, a, yeah. 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 And one question for our guests. <laughs> I get oh, one no. for free. One, one question for, for actual we guests. A, we have a bit. Five questions for other guests. But I have a yes. question for, for actually this one? for Matt Gorley. Okay. Lay it on. Uh, um, do you guys actually have the Cylon sound while you're recording it? Do you that, actually flange it, or do you do it in post? That is the one thing we don't okay. do in post. It is the most intricate setup to do that. Really? So I can tell because you guys yeah. are laughing at, and you're doing things that you wouldn't just do into the microphone unless you could hear the result of it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> James Bladen, who is a good friend of ours, and he does a lot of the music stuff for Super Ego. Uh, he and I play the Cylons. Okay. So um, we he has to bring over his giant heavy MIDI keyboard. Oh, okay. That <laughs> goes into his laptop with Pro Tools, and my laptop is running the recording for the microphones. He he and I have to. He's Cylon in the key of E. I'm Cylon in the key of C, and we have to hit an octave of each. So whenever we speak, we have to we have to depress two C keys for me to talk, and you have to talk really clearly like this for it to work. And then he. So we both have hands on the keyboard from when we want to speak. It's it is the most complicated. But it's thing so we've great ever to have recorded. two characters that are Cylons, and then just of course doing this, giving them this full super ego treatment of just where are they going with this? I yeah. love the imagination that goes into your show. Thank you. That is freaking cool. Thank All you. right. So the first question for other guests: If you could okay. fix only one thing about your healthcare website, what would it be? Oh. Boy, mine personally or the Obamacare <laughs> website? Well, these are questions for other guests. Let's say Obama couldn't make oh, wait, it, wait, but wait, I put so it to you. These are people concept. that didn't show up. <laughs> yes. But we still want to ask the but question. we just want oh, to ask I the question. Oh, yeah. these are good oh I get it. Oh, <laughs> got you. Okay. Well, I have personally used this website. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so Which I, is what a politician would say. It's true. <laughs> it was difficult, and it took forever, and I had to come back day after day, and I eventually was successful and have gotten health care through this website. You look good. Thank you. Yeah. I, I wholly recommend it. Give it time. <laughs> But yes, it was a horrible okay. web design, but a great idea in theory, you know, and it will hopefully be fixed. That's that's great. That's actually really great to hear because I don't know who's starting it, but you could tell what? there's a weird little Fox News things that oh, happen. Oh yeah. When when little phrases come out of people, and they're like <gasps> like some, somebody said to me the other day, like, "Can you believe only six people sign up for healthcare?" I'm like, in the country, and I'm like, <laughs> "Why do I keep hearing six? Where's six? <laughs> who started talk- this six? No, so there's only talk- five yeah. more people. Yeah. Came in a- <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I pay for my own health care personally, and I got a gold plan on this, and I save $170 a month. Oh, yeah. that's oh, expensive. So whatever that means to you, I'm not trying to Dude, I'm, box, we're but, excited about that because we yeah. pl- pay for our own plan right now, too, and it's not the greatest, and we'd love something better, yeah, yeah. but we can't afford anything better. But so you're saying possibly... We could get something better. I have no deductible according to this. You are sexy. Uh, there's a Shut copay. Up. There's a twenty dollar copay. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. that's yeah. freaking fierce. Yeah, it is interesting Gold? to see everyone yelling yeah. about yeah. I like about it. how they're pissed the website isn't working for this thing they didn't want in the first place. Get this thing working <laughs> oh, yeah. so that people can get it's, the thing it, we don't want them and, to get. And how can anything that pisses off the healthcare providers be bad? It's absurd. Right? Exactly, because <laughs> they were winning all, of it all is along. Absurd. It it's is absurd. Also. Have you heard an opinion about this from someone who doesn't have government health care? Most yeah, of the opinions exactly. I hear. Yeah. Right? Right. Right. So I'm just like, well, People ah, who shut have, up. Shut up, millionaire with uh, government health care. It's because they have such amazing Cadillac plans. They 
can't understand yeah. Yeah. at all. Now, this is a question. Yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Matt, this question is not for you, Matt, but okay. the person we were going to ask this for <laughs> didn't show up. Okay. But I'll just ask it anyway. Thank you. Yeah. What, is the, what is the most offensive thing you've ever been called in the locker room? Oh, well, I have a story. <laughs> so I went, I, I went to high school in Whittier, and uh, I was not... I was I was so soundly brought up, so soundly middle class. I mean, I lived in a 50s track suburban neighborhood. But Sweet. circumstantially where we lived, or geographically, I guess, I went to a very rich high school. Oh, okay. And so it was almost all rich hills people. And I don't mean oh. like hillbillies, but like living <laughs> the in hills. the hills. No, I went to school with the, the hill people. Yeah, hill that people would be us. Karen, yeah. Yeah. There was a uh, group of, I want to say, like <clears throat> 200 or 300 Hispanic students that were bussed in to go to this school. They were called His uh, Expanded Horizons was the name for, <laughs> oh for Nice. God. And so <laughs> you never crossed path was, paths with them except just in the halls uh-huh. and in PE class because you didn't have the same uh, Wait, academic classes. Did they them. make them go to the trailer that was just outside of the school because no. we had the trailer that was just no. outside of the school. They shared the okay. school proper, but you just didn't have because they had all English as a second language classes and that sort of thing. But PE was the only thing where you crossed over. And so most people I knew all were in a sport and I was not. So I had to take PE. And so it was me and another guy named Freedom Fisher and all of these people that didn't really speak that much English. Right. And so they started the semester by just would just curse at me in Spanish. <laughs> hey, pichiotto, puto chupa mi verga, we. And I learned to speak that. And by the end of the semester, we were such good friends and we would just talk in Spanish. Get out of here. And, and we would play football. And we I loved those guys. They loved me. Uh, but we would so just speak f- in curse language. I lo- what did you just say? That was I know what good. you just said. Yeah. What did you say? Suck my dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, say it again. Say it again. Who called me something horrible? Yeah. Uh, el puto. What is, what's that shithead? What is puto? It's, like it's a prostitute. It's a whore. Uh, yeah, is it? Okay. Or no, is there yeah. a, or is oh, puta, puta vagina? Yeah, yeah. Panoche. Pa, uh, Panoche. Panoche. Uh, chupa mi verga, we cabrón, pinche joto. How do you figure it out? Do you just go, excuse me, what did you just say? I would just, I would just play the fool and go like... I would Almost say it back say to them blow and, job. and they would <laughs> laugh at me and I knew they were laughing at me and they knew I knew and by the end we just had a mutual respect that was based on oh. them insulting me. I'm so glad yeah. that did not end with you being ass raped. That's a real nice <laughs> story, Oh no, that Clark. happened. <laughs> yeah. But in, in, no, we don't have time. In we Spanish. don't have time for that. Uh, I have a question for you Please. for a completely different guest but since that story of you're here, what completely contrived <laughs> off the cuff publicity stunt do you have planned next to help keep your number, your album at number one? <laughs> oh boy. Um, <laughs> I mean, just off the cuff thing. You know. Jeez, gosh. Uh, I guess uh, I'm going to just get on a wrecking ball. That's a reference, right? <laughs> Take off some clothes and get on a wrecking that. ball. You've done oh, that. Oh, right. Did you but know- no, I'm going to do the same thing nude on a wrecking ball, but actually slam into a building. Like, <laughs> take a building. <laughs> now, will the people inside what know it's be- coming or no? Um, Are you going to be like a Borat and just smash through the window? <laughs> yeah, no. They won't know it's coming. Well, that would be, well, that is a good stunt. brilliant. That would be if. All of a sudden, for example, if we were sitting here and friggin' Nut Bar came through here, yeah. wouldn't you be psyched? Miley sure. Cyrus, That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It'd yeah. be like a living Kool-Aid man, except it, all our bones <laughs> would be broken and blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you never thought about the real implications of a Kool-Aid. Uh, you know, if yeah. someone's standing there, yeah. he's a murderer. Well, yeah. Paul, you yeah. have to edit that together. <laughs> just hate Kool-Aid oh, and yeah. her just going through a friggin' wall. Uh, how will oh, your Tonight Show be different? God. Yes, tell us. Oh, boy. I'm gonna, if, if it's me... I'm going back to Carson because I'm a huge Carson fan. And if anything, Super Ego has a, a style from it's when Carson used to do this straight man comedic character sketch that he and Ed would do. Totally. He's Aunt Blabby or Art Fern. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would just take it back to 70s Carson smoking and drinking on the couch, having multiple guests on that have a that's, conversation. That's the key. I love yeah. that too. Yeah. And then just no formula. My know? dream is for a modern talk show to go all period costume mm. like the 12 30 show that would be great you turn on the yeah. seth meyer show and everyone's in period costume yeah they should well with Mad Men being and, so popular and the guests are coming on and, and the hipster plug thing movies, it'd be but perfect. they're just dressed like a 1976 <laughs> oh, too much marketing research and that you have to have the desk on the left and you have oh, to I know. do right. the comic or the music at the end and it's just i don't know i mean i'm a huge letterman i, I love one what letterman did too, too. yeah, yeah. yeah so i still those early letterman days oh yeah can't be beat I'm so in love with Letterman that when we first got the VCR, I think we first got a VCR in 84, Letterman on a couple years, uh-huh. my mom, 
actually, whatever show's on twelve thirty for since the beginning, of, since forever like I've known the, her, the timer got stuck there, and it would just <laughs> one she'll watch. If it's on twelve thirty, she will watch it. Isn't so that like funny? Craig Kilborn, she uh, loved Kilborn. She loves <laughs> Ferguson. She loves yeah. Moms love Kilborn though. My mom. And loves she loved, of too. course, before Letterman was uh, Tom Snyder. Oh yeah, I used to watch uh, Tom, Tom Snyder. Snyder. I Great. did too. I love Tom. Snyder. Love watching him screw up. Oh. Really yeah. awesome. Get names wrong. I can yeah. respect that. So I meatball. It's meatloaf. It's meatloaf. So as soon as we got the VCR, that happened. <laughs> Every uh, breakfast was with Letterman. That 84, 85, oh, yeah. 86 oh, cool. Letterman. She would oh. watch it the next day. Oh, she'd record it. That's we awesome. still have three or four full years of Letterman on VHS oh, tape. That's great. And they're the good years. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Matt, <clears throat> if you were stranded on a desert island and you could have only one natural disaster, what natural disaster would it be? Well, it would have to be earthquake because, A, I, I do think that that is... Th- Believe it or not, the 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 like least deadly, <laughs> especially if you're in a natural habitat. Yes. And also, I was born and raised in Southern California, so I have a bit of of like of a tough skin built up for earthquakes. And I went through a time right. when I lived in Whittier, where they had the Whittier earthquake in '89. It scared the living daylights out of me. I went home and I built a shelter, and I, I it's what got me into after, science. After it happened. Oh, that <laughs> yes, is so did, cool. Because I, I, there were people going. After that, all around campus going, this was in high school, going, oh, this is earthquake weather. And Nostradamus predicted this was going to happen. And I'm like, something's off about that. <laughs> and so I went weather. home and I, just to make myself feel better, I learned that, no, this is all bullshit. And, ah. and tell scientists, tell me they know when earthquakes are coming. They don't. So you just have to let go a little bit and all know right. that you'll be all right, that buildings are sound and that, that science works. And well, you have buildings cool. on your deserted island. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Straw <laughs> huts. Yeah. <laughs> Sec- secondary question: yeah. If you could have only one disaster movie with you, which would disaster oh, movie would it be? Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh god! I feel like I want to give this question due time. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to it. Oh. But now I, I'm not going to be listening to anything. <laughs> All I can think of is is the the one I don't even know what his name is. It Peak or something? Dante's Peak. Yeah. Oh, Dante's Peak. Yeah. And uh, what was the other one? That Volca- came out? Volcano. Volcano. Those are yeah. scary. Volcanoes scare me because it's so dangerous, mm. but it moves Volcano so slowly. Horrible. That was a horrible movie. Yeah. Well, not the movie, just oh, in okay. general. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. So, what, God, what do you, I mean? You've got earthquake. You've got the the, the day swarm? after tomorrow. The swarm. Um, you've got liar. Killdozer, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Is I there don't a know. snow? Oh well, and of course there's yeah, uh, the day after Piranha tomorrow. the Spider. Poseidon Adventure. Oh right. Airport, all the airports. Yeah. Airport 79, that the Concord. Always, I would dream about that as a kid. I don't know why. The uh, the image of a plane coming through the window. F- of the airport. Yeah. yeah Have you seen classic. The Impossible? That movie no, scared the no, shit out of you. I watched the trailer to that and said, I will not watch this movie because Thank you. I, it I just agree. feels like... I will weep like a baby. Yep. And I, I looked at it and it reminded right. me of my girlfriend. And I'm like, I can't, no. I can't take, I'm at a point in my life, I'm at an age where I don't like to watch sad movies because <laughs> oh, yeah. I haven't had a sad life. But Lee, at the same who's time, in your seat, yeah. says the same thing. I'm no, just like, right. why do I want to yeah. be sad for two hours? He's, oh, yeah. that, that uh, right. where Hugh Jackman and uh, Terrence uh, Howard have their kids taken. Prisoners. Or whatever. Oh. Yeah. Prisoners. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's good, I bet 12 Years a Slave is a wonderful movie. <laughs> I'm not going to see it. <laughs> and it's just, I just, I just don't want to feel bad. I don't want to feel sad. Sad, yeah. Uh, last question for you, Matt. Before we let you go, mm-hmm. what you're a, you list yourself as a doctor on Super Ego? Yes. Explain your degree. Oh yes, you PYT. Yeah. yeah. What is that? Well, PYT. Jeremy's a PhD, and I'm a PYT, and it comes from uh, the Michael Jackson song. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> Pretty young thing. I was yeah. That. Yeah. 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 That's the other thing about Super Ego is like all this crazy sketch stuff is 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 labeled with some sort of psychological analysis for some uber plot to the show that's yeah, that, it makes no an sense. afterthought yeah. 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 that's awesome like but Mr. a great Sense framing Theater. device yeah, yeah. <laughs> alright we'll give it up for Matt Gorley yeah. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys it was a pleasure oh, nice. there you go oh, oh, nice. rainbow nice. curtain opens there up there you go oh. uh, thanks for coming to the Admirals Club now make sure to go to superego.com or search superego on iTunes for more of the absurdist podcast Matt is dishing out uh, we're going to get Lee back here in a few minutes and fire up Karen's birthdays. Matt Gorley. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, that turned into a Bond conversation. That was <laughs> exhilarating. <laughs> I just watched the documentary on Netflix on Carson. Yeah. Man, that fucking Carson, man. He was something, wasn't he? Oh, so yeah. He was an empire. They That's hammer himself. it home so much in two hours just how great Carson was. Yeah. yeah. I really miss Carson. Somebody made the greatest point in the documentary, too. I think it was Conan, which was 
or no, maybe it wasn't Conan, uh, but it doesn't matter. But somebody said the point everybody really missed in the whole fight of who's going to take over the Tonight Show and all this sort of stuff is the the, the final thing is it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. It's not Johnny Carson. Not Johnny. It's not the yeah. Tonight Show. So it's just another show now. It's so just a everybody time, thought they were going to. It's, yeah. it's just a time slot. It's, yeah, it's still just another show with Jay. I hate to say it, and yeah. being yeah. a guy who's yeah. been an adult through all of that, through him taking over it and through him no. giving it up again. There's not a signature on it. There has been no Johnny Carson. You know what? Fallon I, is not going to bring that back. No. I, I got to tell you, I was just watching the Pete Holmes show. I saw a couple tapings, and he has a really unique, different feel about his show. Yeah, he's and I deliberately different. I really like it, and I think it's going to speak to the new audience that's coming up because the uh, audience I was sitting there with was uh, a bunch of women, you know, 30s, whatever, and then a bunch of dudes in their 20s who weren't, they weren't like obnoxious or annoying. They were smart. They were fun. It was kind of cool. I really like what Pete Holmes is doing with his show because uh, he, he basically takes every sort of thing that... I, I, I joked when the Jimmy Kimmel show came out. I'm like, do they have to bother to pitch these shows? I, here's what here's what I think my show is going to be. <laughs> right. I'm going to come out, tell a couple topical jokes. Then I'm going to do sort of a comic bit. And then we're going to interview three guests. Are you going to have a sofa? And then a band. A desk? Sofa. Yeah, I think, Sold. Yeah. I think we're going to go desk and sofa. Yep. You know, it's like... Yeah. Musical guests, the whole deal. So, yeah. yeah, so I like that Pete completely... Yeah, he doesn't not have... Not a topical monologue. He doesn't and, have yeah. a sofa. He has two chairs. Stools. Yeah, yeah, yeah stools. He the... He's raised up a bit. He doesn't yes. want the guests hanging around. That's why I have stools at my house. You can sit down and have a soda, but then out the door, buddy. <laughs> I don't think we're changing the format of Karen's birthday. Oh! But here they are anyway. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Let's start off our birthdays this week by wishing a happy birthday to Leonardo DiCaprio. Happy birthday, there Leo. There you go, who turns 39 but can play anywhere from a young Mason Capwell on Santa Barbara to the no. great Gatsby. He played wait. young Mason Capwell? Yes, isn't that cool? Uh, on the, wait a minute, on the soap opera Santa, Santa Barbara? Santa Barbara, the soap yeah. opera. With Ridge and Brooke and Forrest and Dude, all those other wildlife. He played Mason. And the great Lane Davies as oh. Mason Capwell. And Jesus. he was young Mason And he was Capwell. young. Yeah, that's wow, kind of crazy. this is like superhero movies for you guys. <laughs> You don't understand. Yeah. All through the 70s, I had all these bad, uh, you know, I could look at old Search for Tomorrow clips, and I'd see great actors. I'm waiting for the great one day when Santa search. Barbara comes out, and then it comes out, and I go to the, and I watch it, and it's, anyway, I'm starting, trying to Barbara, do an Adam bold. Right. <laughs> bold and the beautiful. Now, this is yep. kind of, uh, Leonardo grew up in what we call the, well, what he also called the slums of Hollywood, and I imagine when I tell you where it is, you'll all agree, the corner of Hollywood and Western. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And for some reason, I keep thinking that's where you had your bike accident. <laughs> Uh, food for is less? that what you had no, your bike but that, exit? No, but that's the main intersection because I, okay. I I lived uh, down you know on uh, Western and Beverly, and you to just... catch the train you would go up there in that intersection. But what was really funny is one night my roommate and I were, were living in this area, mm-hmm. and we we're watching the movie The Howling. And at the beginning, there's a woman who is in the worst part of L.A. to, to right. get to the bottom of a shitty, <laughs> shitty story that can only take place in the worst fucking place. And they go, uh, uh, Western and Melrose. And it's like, <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. You're like, like, that's where I live. That's why that one adult porn shop is still there. Like, you know, I knew where they were. Yeah. Like, I want to live on Yucca the rest of my life. <laughs> exactly. So I, uh, I found, as I was doing my research, that we probably could have guessed this, but... Leonardo, he's just like one of us. He doesn't really have many extravagances. He says he no. doesn't fly private jets. Just he like us. Just like us. He doesn't so have stupid. bodyguards. <laughs> and he doesn't buy crazy things. But of course, we all know he dates supermodels. Yeah. Just, just like us. Just, just like, like Lee. <laughs> just like Lee. I don't fly jets. No. Nope. Just like Lee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He does drive a Prius to get him that. Yeah. Does he? Now, dating a supermodel, that's going to cost you, though. That's like oh, buying that's a car, right? Think that's why he can't <laughs> Your afford... Your money is simply repurposed. Any of the other yeah. things. Next up, let's wish a happy birthday to our birthday girl, Anne Hathaway, <gasps> who oh. turns 31, yep, but can play anywhere from a princess to a disease-riddled whore. I love mm, that that yummy. whole bit. What is that from? We- Richard... Uh, Richie Gervais, where my boyfriend is in there. He's like, she was riddled with it. Riddled with AIDS. With oh, AIDS. yeah. yeah she was riddled on, with AIDS. Uh, <laughs> question. Life's too short. Yes. Yes. Is she attractive? Ah, that brings me to my next question. I personally find Anne Hathaway attractive because I like it that she made it okay to have a big nose. A nose that can hold its own with big eyes and a big mouth. I can respect that. If you've seen the video, you'd understand. I like the big eyes, but the head's t- kind of tiny, right? Her head's kind of tiny, and she's got <laughs> big features. But this is a thing that people are saying. They're calling it... Half a haters. A lot of people do not, especially women, do not like Anne Hathaway, which I will now bring Lee's question to the table. 
Do we like her or don't we like her? I Twitter. like her. I like her. I like her, but I don't, and I think she's attractive, yeah. but I don't think she's sexy. And here's why. This uh, is actually a compliment. Ms. You're half a half a hater. Shut up. I know. No, it's just a fucking opinion. Hashtag on an actor. half a hater. It's ridiculous. <laughs> This is what happens when everything on your face is a little too perfect. It's all big oh, and perfect. Yeah. It's all, her eyes are perfect. Her nose is actually kind of her perfect. Her nose is kind of big. But it's a perfect shape. It's long. Her mouth is no, perfect. But when you put don't. all that perfect together, you kind of go, oh, it doesn't you look right. kill me with her nose is perfect. You put it Everyone on a tiny face. Look, that's big. a problem. Tiny and head. you put it on that's the right. face the size of a good tomato, and that's <laughs> it. All right. Well, here's something that I thought was kind of interesting. So I will say this. Oh, yes, she Paul. continually Cantaloupe. surprises me as an actress. Catwoman, for example. Continue. Sure. <laughs> oh. yeah. Of also, course, never thought you'd pull that off. Of now, course, I woman. want you to think about these two, and this will make it a little clearer, and I think Lee was hitting on this a little bit. If you had to decide which was more of the perfect woman, Anne Hathaway or Jennifer Lawrence, which direction would you go? Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. yeah Why? Probably so. Jennifer Lawrence, right? Because, because, because she doesn't look like you break her in half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got fat cheeks. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> now, check no this deal. out. So there is this whole I'm article written. Uh, in New York Magazine, and they said that we simply don't find successful, perfect women all that likable, adding that women prefer sassy best friend types like Jennifer Lawrence with their Oscar night podium stumbles and self-effacing jokes about yeah, spanks true. and cheesesteaks. Lee, now, would you kick either sweetheart. of them out of bed? No, but I will <laughs> say also in Anne's, uh, not defense, but yes. um, she is amazingly charming. Every time you see her yeah. on The Tonight Show, she's affable. She's, but so is Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, she's she is. friggin' funny. But we're talking purely physical, right? We're talking physical. Oh, I'm talking right? about hanging out. Jennifer Lawrence is funny and oh, cool. Oh, I would hang out with either of them. I know. <laughs> see, but the thing about Anne naked. is when she hosted the Oscars, Anne Hathaway Love seemed it. all kinds of nuts. Yeah, a little well, you know, she was like standing flailing next to and being crazy. Very musical theatery. Please like me. Uh, I'm performing. That's why when her you know? Catwoman performance especially surprised me because it was very controlled mm -hmm. and very purpose and so I, I hope I would like hanging out with her but I think I would enjoy spending time with Jennifer Lawrence. I'm sure you, you would. If you would allow that honey. I'm not sure. <laughs> as long as I can watch. If you can set it up Paul, have at it. It's tough because Jennifer Lawrence is an X-Men. Anyway, move on. Uh, move anyway, on. and lastly <laughs> I know it's hard. We're all busy talking about beautiful people so I have one more perfect person to wish a happy birthday to. And Mine's not until next month. I, other than Lee, okay. it's the Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Happy birthday. He turns <gasps> 33 but can play anywhere from a super nice guy to a total and complete asshole in these movies. Which brings me to my fun new family game, Asshole or Not. <laughs> I'll give you the name of a Ryan Gosling movie and you tell me whether or not he is an asshole in it or oh, okay. not. not. Oh. All right. Murder, are there, uh, yes. Are there wrong answers? No. Okay. <laughs> there are no wrong answers. Murder by Numbers. Murder by Numbers. He was in that, huh? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's a, it's a law movie. Uh, he's not an asshole in that, I don't think. He's an asshole in that. <gasps> Is he? He's an asshole. Uh, yeah, what's he he's doing kind of a bad one? guy. It's a Sandra Bullock thriller. He's oh. mean he to Sandra thought. Bullock, so he's an asshole. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> Lars <laughs> and the Real Girl. Not oh, an asshole. Not an asshole. Innocent it depends. Guy. He's kind no, he's of creepy. a weirdo. Yeah, but, but that's not, not being an asshole. asshole. Yeah. All right. And for the record, I think we'd all like to hang out with Sandra Bullock, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Oh, sure. She combines both of those things. The Believer. Have you heard of this movie? The yes, I have. Yeah. Put him on the map. Not an asshole. That? Not an asshole. He's I'll not an no. asshole if no. you like Hitler. Damn, I just took a yeah, guess. Yeah, just I a swear good I guess. Good guess. <laughs> Never heard all right, the movie. You'll get this one. The Notebook. Oh, not. Not an not asshole. asshole. But that, no, but that whole movie's an asshole. But fantasy, Now I what the Believer is. Yeah. And then also Blue Valentine. Not, right? Paul, Asshole. Paul's, I've not seen it, but Paul's like, I oh. was listening to a clip from I something. I thought it was a sweetie pie in that one or something. No, Apparently no, it's a no, it's total a horribly, uh, awful guy. Uh, Blue Valentine with, with Dennis Hopper? No, with Michelle Williams. There are a couple what that should not of? be together. Oh. And it doesn't go well. What's the Dennis Hopper? What was the big, Velvet. Velvet. What was Velvet. the big controversy about that movie? Yeah. Everyone was whisper chatting, whisper chatting. Sex scenes. Oh, yeah. 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 Put it close to NC-17. you see a dick or something? Yeah. 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 Do we see his dick? Yeah. It was I Ryan Gosling. Oh, that's right. And lastly. See Ryan's Gosling? Drive. Asshole or not? Not at all. That was a great freaking movie. He's kind Dick, I thought he's an though, asshole, but he's my right? kind of asshole. Oh, in that movie. I think this is where the line gets blurred. He's yeah. an asshole who's a hero. Who's yeah. a hero? And lastly, you know, all of you know how much I love when celebrities sing. So I'm bringing you. <laughs> oh, do we got another cut? Yes, this week? a super oh, special treat because not only does Ryan Gosling sing in this one, he also wrote it and he performs <gasps> it with his band Dead Man's Bones. Oh, do they all have bands? All right, let's see if I can hit the post. Here's Ryan Gosling singing In the Room Where You Sleep. Yeah, you missed it. From the movie The Conjuring. He sang a song in The Conjuring? And what? wrote it. It was used in The Conjuring. This it, is him? Here Apparently. he comes in. 
You'll hear his voice. Oh, in that's a not him. <laughs> All right, well, that wraps another movie showcase. Wait, everybody. did we talk about movies enough? <laughs> <laughs> Together we are the movie guys. Individually we are. Yeah, hey, guys. Us. Follow us on Twitter at The Movie Guys and Facebook, facebook.com slash The Movie Guys, YouTube, uh, Instagram. We've been very busy on there lately, so check out Instagram. Uh, and thanks to Matt Gorley. Yeah. Highly, highly recommend looking him up on Sorry Drunk History. Sorry we had to you out while he was in here, yeah. Lee. Yeah. Taking one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> they have full episodes of Drunk History on ComedyCentral.com. Oh, Go I look forgot for to mention. He does the one with Watergate, right? Yeah, it's great. Oh, and that is I my very favorite that. Drunk yeah. History line. Of course, we had so much shit to talk about with him. But I wanted to tell him that is the best line in Drunk History is the one where he goes, uh, I was going to call him Deep Cover, uh, but I think we should call him Deep Throat because of the... Pornogra- pornography movie with natural ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's spoken by Craig Kukowski. Uh, uh, natural, natural ladies. But that's him that's drunk telling that story. God, that's awesome. Oh, that's, oh he got drunk Yeah, he's one. the uh, yeah, he's Twice, the, actually. He's Did the Alamo one, too, I believe. Oh, oh I don't so, yeah. see that. But uh, anyway, go to super uh, go superego.com as a website. And thanks to Steve Scholes for all his writing contributions to the show every week. And remember, you can find everything we're up to at themovieguys.net. Thanks for listening. Oh, yeah.